Um, Hi. Hey, we're on the internet. Hello. So, how are you? Greetings, beautiful people of the internet. Because none of the ugly internet people are here. Why would they be? I feel bad. My little pin is like not uh, visible. Yeah, it's all right. We have a big logo in the center of the screen. Yeah, and we it's, also that's pretty much all. We also pin. did. Uh, you notice a difference in sound quality by pointing the mics directly at yeah. our faces. This is getting more of our, it. our hot vibes and less other people's vibes into the mic. It's getting there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I still have great difficulty in isolating a track. Like if yeah. somebody else is somebody else like me is mumbling Fuck something over. Yeah. Do we ever order the sound baffling? That's that's a Harlow thing. He left. He did. So I'm asking. <laughs> I'm telling you that it's a Harlow thing. So <laughs> I've done that in meetings before. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, that's that's a... Terry knows about that. I'm like, Terry's not here. I'm asking you. Mm-hmm. And then they get all like, oh, what? And I'm like, what's your answer? Your my job may is, depend on this. My answer I is... I can't that fire was, anybody. There's only one person I can fire, right. and I like her, and she's going to stay because she does a good job. My answer remains. Ah. Ask Harlow about that. What? He's not my subordinate. How are we on the sound <laughs> baffling issue? Are we baffled yet? Huh? The the grid we were going to get. Yeah. Was it? What's up with that? <laughs> 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 like how's that going do we have any sound baffling we d- we don't i i i didn't know if you bought the invisible kind yeah i just i i was giving you the benefit of the doubt <laughs> that we had invisible baffling in here but I, that's the asshole boss <laughs> Matthew, that we all know and love mm-hmm. <laughs> oh so you're saying there's not <laughs> yeah they're they're next to the TPS reports. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, did we? Are we going to get some? Probably. Yeah. Because it wasn't that expensive, right? Yeah. Not really. No. And we can make it look cool. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I hereby command thee to order it. Uh, please. Okay. <laughs> because you're the only one with the credit card. <laughs> right. <laughs> this falls to you now. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know the credit card number. Chuck probably does. He's probably been ordering Blu-rays and DVDs and shit. Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I haven't seen any emails come I haven't seen any notifications say, yeah, yet. That say, here, you've spent your life yeah. savings on Kino Lorber. Man. <laughs> there was one order I was like, holy shit, we are single-handedly keeping Kino Lorber in business. <laughs> right. It was what, like a, a 200 and Something dollar. Oh, order? it was like yeah. three thousand and fifty dollars. It was a lot. No, it wasn't that much. It was like five hundred and seventy five movies. No. It give was a lot give of give or take. It, it was, was an excessive time. amount. It was it was an indigestible amount of movies. There I have tweeted from the website like a goddamn peasant. Did you have to schedule it? No, it just let me tweet. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> Something's working. That got fixed. That's good. Now I get to go into Discord. This which, which cord? This cord. Oh. So, should I get Subterra? No. You which already is... have like 50,000 games. Yeah, I know. But this one is a tile laying uh, cave escape game that works under a black light. All it, games it, technically it work under tile, a black light. It's, it's Thai. Thai cave escape. That's the. Oh. Yeah. You're, you're like all those it. kids. Yeah. And the diver who saved them that Elon called a pedophile because Elon's a piece of shit. Fine, I won't get it, BJ. I mean... I won't get it. First of all... I'm not getting it. All games work under a black light, technically. Like, Uh, you know, all games... Pretty much all games will work under a black light. It's supposed to be a cave escape game. It's thematic. Are you supposed to play it in the dark with a black light? It would be pretty fucking sweet if you did. Just saying. What I'm saying... I don't need another game. Right. Yeah. You already have like 50. You're not wrong. You have 50 in the next room here, and you don't even live here. I know. I need to. That's true. I have a permanent address. You're like subletting 
game. I, yeah, I need, I have a permanent address should, now, so hopefully I hopefully you're actually, paying for that space. I have actually shifted my uh, the new ones are coming here. The ones that were not like already address locked. Oh, they can finally. actually go to my house now, hmm. or my work, depending on if I want to hide them from my wife. Not that I would do that, but I am. <laughs> Okay, now I can close Twitter. Forever. Hooray. Just just leave. Hooray. Just it's okay. I haven't been back in like a month and it's been really nice. I miss some people. There are a few people I'm like, oh, I wonder what they're up to. And then I'm like, ah, but they're on Twitter, so I'm not gonna find out. Right. Well, it won't show their tweets to me. Oh really? I just in general, it's like, hey, here's the very latest tweet that happened, and if you try to scroll back, then y- the app is broken. Like, so they made it like Facebook. Because Facebook quite, is I famous think... for like, hey, my friend posted this thing, and I go, oh, that's pretty cool. And as I'm about to tap it, it just refreshes. It, yeah. it refreshes and goes away, and I will never, ever find and it again. And then you end up liking yeah. your ra- racist uncle's <laughs> post. <laughs> right. I don't, um, I don't know how Facebook works. I, don't know. Just to say I, everyone, I, I assume everyone actually, has a racist uncle. Basically, everyone that I'm like, man, fuck that. They get the 30-day mute. Hmm. And then when they show back up until they say something stupid again, then they get another 30-day mute. It works all right. I don't have... Uh, well, I don't know about they my get other 30 uncle. days and a mute. Yeah. yeah. For being racist. One thing that it's doing now, it's, it's doing the pivot to video thing. It's, it, I'll have like a notification. It's like, oh, and I'm like, what is it? And it's like... This site you follow has posted a video, and I'm like, no, never show me this again. And then it just it's and going a it's, week later. It it's eventually it gotten to like my co- my cousin's concrete company posted a video, and I'm like, I don't even remember liking my p- cousin's concrete. Oh, thing. you should. They're pretty yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah. Slam but anyway, like like there, it's so desperate for me to click a video there for some reason. Yeah, it is like cycling through literally everything I've ever liked in the history of my Facebook video there for some Ah, reason. The thing that I really hate about the way Facebook is working lately is it just suggests all these groups to me, like all these these vaguely nerd pages, like a lot of Doctor Who pages, and I haven't watched an episode of Doctor Who in like six, seven years. And it's like, hey, Doctor Who, bad wolf group, you want, look at this post by them. And I'm like, no, I don't want to see that. And it's like, are but but you do. Yeah. We say you do, so you do. Yeah, I'm in trouble because Jen started getting uh, board game recommendations. Oh, it's it's like pushing like Kickstarter board game stuff into her feed. Yeah. Whoops. And she's like, "Have you heard about this one?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> and I'm like, well, "I only have like a two hundred fifty dollar pledge in it right yeah. now." You'll find out when it shows up. Yeah. (laughs) Don't click on what the all-in option says. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Boy, she looks so sassy in that uh, that still frame that you've posted. That was one of the only still frames. frames. Well, I mean, that wasn't you know two hundred p. You know, yeah. This was a decent resolution. Yeah. I, I'm amazed someone had a decent resolution picture of that. IMDb. The, vid- uh, the movie itself isn't even in decent resolution. Mm, I nope. I borrowed this image from the Internet Movie Database. Hooray! Oh. Which means someone in turn borrowed it from somewhere else. So yep. I, mean, I would love that they would come after you for taking their images but mm-hmm. from a user content generated site now and by Amazon. How is it that... <sighs> I don't know. Because I don't know the rest of the thought. How is it that both Amazon or both IMDb and Twitch are owned by Amazon, like the richest company in the world that isn't Apple, and they both fucking stink? They just they just keep getting worse. Yep. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but Amazon is basically global Walmart. I mean, they are. They're out to destroy the world in the same yeah. way Walmart was on a local level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Except so. they destroyed everything and then became a flea market. Well, uh, yes. I full mean, of knockoff bullshit. Sure. You can't yeah. find any actual thing anymore. I know. But right. And if you do buy an, if you do buy an actual thing, you might end up with a knockoff in the box. 
Yeah. Because they're overworking people. They don't, and they don't give them time to, you know, well, but both they don't give them time and they also dump all the same related shit in myriad boxes that are unrelated. I like yeah, how it's, it's I, will, nightmare I will actually choose centers. the option to, uh, okay, you can deliver it to me on Tuesday. I don't care. Put it all in one box. Oh, what that, happens that Tuesday? Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll get one. Yeah. I'll get one Sunday, one Monday, one Tuesday, and they'll all be in separate. Actually, I'll get th- like three on Tuesday, but they'll all be in separate boxes. Right. I'm like, why did you fucking bother? Like, why did you even ask me? But I, I, I usually just, just to fuck with them, I, I decline their give me anything, save them money. Uh, option because <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I know yeah. how much prime costs now and i'm like i don't order that much from you anymore so give it to me as fast yeah. as you can humanly make it here because i know that costs you more so. yeah i screwed up like right after christmas all the sort of shit i need like the electronic lock for my house like oh just the the, the route the wi-fi stuff like all of it I fucked up because I didn't order it all right away because I had spent like thousands and thousands of dollars buying stuff for the house already. And now it's all like double the price that it was during the first couple of weeks of January. I'm like, motherfucker. And then I look on Camel, Camel, Camel. It's like, yeah, that was the lowest price it's ever been. And it never will be again because yeah. it's only been that low once ever. And I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. So, And also you're going to, if you buy it now, you're going to get a a return open box. Yep. Even though you ordered a brand new one. Yep. It'll be open and all the keys are, will be missing. And it's not like Amazon won't make it right. They'll refund you the money or they'll send you a new one, but it'll take another week. Yeah. The classic is still uh, when there was a Black Friday deal on Xbox One X's. Mm-hmm. And I ordered one and it never showed up. And they're like, okay, well, we put another one out. They both showed up the same day. And I was like, yo, Amazon, uh, I've got two Xboxes here. And the the guy literally said, keep it. Merry Christmas. It's so weird that they're willing to eat. They're willing to eat. And that was back when they were like, you know, like $400 for one of those. I mean, I can't believe they'll eat $400. That's that's strange on on a product that size. Like, I get why they did what they did with the television I bought from them. Because like shipping it back, yeah, shipping that and, and reboxing and everything was like constrictive. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, an Xbox would be like take it to your UPS store. Yeah, you know, or I, I'm uh, sure they do that now. Walgreens, wherever their drop off points are. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a couple of weird ones like you can drop Amazon returns at Kohl's. Walgreens for some reason. Kohl's, yeah. yeah. It's like I don't understand these things, but Kohl's wants the uh, yeah, yeah. People want the walk in business. Is it CVS or Walgreens? One of them. It's like one of the two nationwide ones. I don't you even can know now. you can drop off. I can't really? remember. It's one of the two. It might be both. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was a what fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar TV at the time, and I was basically like, half the half the features I I spent more on for this TV don't work. Like the three D is bullshit, like absolute bullshit, not calibrated at all. And mm-hmm. I was like, I could have spent eight hundred dollars and got the other features minus that. And they're like, what if we just take that difference off? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and they just refunded me basically half the cost of the TV. That's crazy. Yeah. Which, like I said, it, I mean, it's not like I really benefited other than, like, you know, I got money back. But, I mean, it was like I just basically went down to the lower tier te- television I would have bought if I had I not spent extra money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it was. It was 3D and, and the Dolby Vision on it was like an old protocol for it. For So, like, anything mm-hmm. that was actually showing up that was Dolby Vision came up, like, look almost like a negative image (laughs) it was weird it was like yeah strange i had a couple movies back when i was doing i mean i guess i could try watching them now because i still have that tv Mm -hmm. but i I had a couple movies that were just like not done right like i think it was thor ragnarok Mm. i actually imported a uk copy and there was something wrong with it because it was just like double images on everything well i mean would that be an NTSC slash PAL thing? Would that fuck with 3D? I don't know. I don't think so. Because cause it was... Because my understanding is with Blu-rays, that didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Hey, but oh, yeah, it was... Random question that you you may know that I yeah. haven't... I could easily look up right now. That I'm, Is Sam Mendes American or British? I assume he's American just from his history. And I thought he was British. Okay. So I'm confused because... <laughs> Let's see. Is Sam Mendes British? 
Uh, Sir Samuel Alexander Mendez. Oh. He's a British film and stage director, well, producer, there you go. and screenwriter. Well, see, that makes it even less sense, because I, I just watched... Yeah, because uh, he's done all sorts of American movies. Well, I mean, did American Beauty, which, I mean, yeah. should be a tip-off. But, I mean, like, uh, uh, no, I just watched Empire of Light, and there's a scene in there where, you know, but it's weird. They never actually say the persistence of vision, which I thought was the common phrase of, like, how film works, of, like, mm -hmm. you know, your brain wants to connect the images and make it motion. Um, but, like, Toby Jones is, like, explaining the films were running through at frames per second. And he's like, yeah, 24 frames is your magic thing. And I'm like, but in the, in, in Europe's 25, like, like, why is that wrong? I thought it, that was a video. I thought no, it was no. the video broadcast. No, the films, film was 25. American film was 24. British film was 25. NTSC video was 29.97. Yeah. And, and PAL is like an actual straight 30. I did, it's a, so it was like it was closer with video, but like that's why American films like are they always thought American actors had high pitched voices because we were running them slightly faster, slightly, slightly ever so slightly faster. Really? Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I was just like, that's a weird detail to get wrong in a yeah European I mean, movie. Pal and NTSC, I can somewhat understand only because of the power discrepancy sure. that something got screwed up in there. Yeah. But sorry, that's you're extremely nerdy. I know the <laughs> frames of per second thing but i mean no i just i wonder i mean i almost wonder if like they shot two different cuts of that and like they actually inserted the 24 into the american versions of it just because they were like actually trying to you know educate people i don't know i mean maybe i mean stranger yeah. things have happened like, it, like the demotion man you know like mm -hmm. it's you know every fast food is uh pizza in the rest of the world but taco bell in america you know because mm -hmm. taco bell was not popular in the rest of the world like pizza hut was Hmm. So Taco Bell was a funny joke in America, but the rest of the world, it was, every restaurant was Pizza Hut. Weird. Which, that's a weird one, because they actually, like, had to do shots with branding, I'm pretty sure, in that movie. I'm pretty sure there's, like, actually, like, Taco Bell logos and shit. Yeah. yeah. So they would have like, actually, like, done other alternate takes. That would not happen in these modern times. Well, no, because they just paste another right. oh, yeah, GIF over top of the other one. <laughs> <sighs> oh man yeah I, I guess I'm gonna be the lone voice but you know since we're just pre-show bantering not that anyone cares but uh it this year is like probably the first year where I'm like man the Oscars are fucking bullshit <laughs> like I mean they're really just bullshit like they just, I feel like you've said that a I few mean times. but they man they whiffed so fucking hard this year like I'm just like I mean Three or four of their best picture nominees, I'm like, are almost unfucking watchable movies. I mean, like, I mean, like, Elvis, I don't even know what they Elvis were. is like. I, I'm a Baz Luhrmann apologist, and I have not made it through that movie yet. And for that to be on fucking best picture, and Top Gun Maverick to be best picture, and like not the Batman, and it's like, here's your visual effects, Batman, good job. And yeah. it's like, you're so underplaying this movie, like. You know, this is going to be that. I'm just saying, the the Batman is going to be one of those movies like ten year, ten fifteen years from now. It's going to be like uh, Zodiac or Gone Girl or something. Like mm. people are going to be fucking studying frames of this film. Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> so and it's just like yeah, but it's also Maverick. like uh, Oscars is basically just like all boomers now I, yeah, voting on everything, well, which I, is which surprises me that everything everywhere all at once. That's probably not like, for anything. That's like the one thing in there. I mean, I haven't seen Tar. That's supposed to be really good. I don't, mm -hmm. but and um, I haven't seen the Banshees of Inchrain or whatever. But, you know, because I haven't been. I've heard that's quite good. I'm sure well. it's good, but you know, it's probably the kind of movie I'm actually honestly would have to put subtitles on. Like yeah. you know, and I'm just I haven't been well, in the mood for like subtitles in in my almost my own language. Yeah, yeah that's that's annoying. It does subtitle. have Brendan a robbed bank Gleason in it. It does. So. Yeah. Just saying, there's another movie that has Colin Farrell in it that was better. Possibly two, because I also haven't seen After Yang, but that's supposed to be really good too. Anyway, uh, After Yang, but no, yeah, that was also this year with him in it. But uh, mm. uh, so uh, the Fablemans was nominated for Best Picture, and like that movie's fine. It's a little masturbatory, and I was gonna say it seemed like it was very much like. It's a little here's Steven Spielberg saying why he's great. It's a little masturbatory, and like the thing is, is like if it had been a different year, like. Empire Light is a better movie about the magic of cinema and mm -hmm. what it, and the transformative nature of it. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> just whatever to me. I mean, you know, Fablemans is just a bit too on the nose and like 
give me a Roger Deakins shot movie any day of the week. Not that, you know, Spielberg uses bad DPs. I'm just saying, no. like. Had Darius Kanji for a while there. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty darn good. Yeah, but he's not Roger Deakins. So. Uh, that's true. Okay. Nobody is. Uh, buying stuff? No, no. I am uh, looking at the between five and seven completely unrelated to my skill set jobs that Indeed oh. gives to me every day. Yeah, Indeed. We're bad at this. The funny thing is the website is really good at it, but I get five between five and seven emails every day. They all come in within like a minute of each other. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, I'm they interested in you for this role. suck. And it's like... The reason they're interested in me for the role is because my location is Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. That's I'm cool because like, I just get emails all the time for things that aren't even in this city. <laughs> yeah. They're just like yeah. down in Palm Beach, Florida or Tempe, Arizona. Well, that's what <laughs> that's what ZipRecruiter has been doing lately is sending me. Oh, God. ZipRecruiter is the fucking worst, dude. Again, ZipRecruiter, like when I'm on the platform, it's not bad. But... Um, yeah, it just it has decided because I looked for remote jobs and I have applied for remote jobs in other cities. It's like, mm-hmm. oh man, you must be interested in this, you know, seventeen dollar an hour job in yeah. Texas. Yeah. Non remote. And I'm like, stop. You're you're ruining it. Yeah. You're ruining it. Everything yeah. about this. Yep. Glassdoor yeah. sucks too. They all suck. Yeah. In their own way. LinkedIn ways. is okay, but the, my yeah. problem with LinkedIn is that every single time I do a job search, I get 500 promoted jobs in that yeah. job search that are unrelated to what I'm searching for. This is true. It's fucking impossible. But I have a fourth interview with a with a company tomorrow. Like the fourth time you've interviewed with them? Yeah. The fourth for this position. Yeah. It's insane. It's what are, it's, what are they waiting for? I mean, they should like, what they are, should is, have hired me based off. Are of the they last waiting interview. for you to be like? Actually, I'm a Nazi. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you're hired. Right. You're going to be the Hugo Boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> diversity. We believe in diversity. Right. Uh, I got to stop making the Nazi yeah. Hugo Boss jokes. Just take take it back a notch. Just mm. it felt really right there. <laughs> it, it was it was a good one. Yeah. It, it worked. Oh, yeah. No, it was supposed. I was supposed to have a, a, a two on one interview Monday, and yeah, it, on it was a one on one interview. Same time. <laughs> yeah, it was a one on one interview, and oh. the guy was like, "Well, my my colleague said that if you know, if I had your or if you had my approval, then that was good enough for him." And I'm like, I was like, "Cool, great. Let's just let's, let's get just, started. Let's get this. <laughs> let's get the show on the road." Um, but then Tuesday, I got an email from the other guy. And he's like, hey, I'd just like to have 15 minutes to talk with you. Is this remote or is it local? It's remote. Okay, cool. So hopefully it's like get us. Hey, man, you got that fiber. Yeah, I do. I And actually, it's a it's a, it's a a job that uh, is working with. It's basically a, a project manager for designers and the, the design team. Oh, nice. Uh, so you will have to tell me who it is after we are off camera. You probably haven't heard of them, honestly. But yeah. Um, You'd be surprised, but I'm very well connected. You know, no, you're not. You're um, right. <laughs> I have many leather bound yeah. books, <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> it smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> One of the things I told the the first guy I interviewed with, which was the director, I was like, hey, I've got, I've got fiber here. Like managing huge files, not a problem. Yeah, like even Up on and down, even on Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's synchronous gigabit. Toss man. me a gig. Yeah, Let's do it. It is, and yeah, I was like, it's made such a huge difference in the ability of design work to be done remotely, yeah. especially with all the cloud, you know, mm-hmm. the cloud design management software. Yeah. Shh. Easy peasy. Uh, have they mentioned what, uh, what PM software they're using? Litho. I haven't worked with Litho before. Yeah. Me I mean, they're all kind of the same. They're just, uh, that's what I told him. I was like, you know, I, kn- yeah. I know stuff. I'm fine. Yeah. Once Any you know the software. basics, it's basically just like, yeah. Learning the lingo that it uses. Right. I've it, used eight other ones before. Yeah. So. What What I hate with ours is that it ca- calls everything an issue, and to me that like just bumps up my stress level mm-hmm. because it'll say like there's a new issue with this thing. I'm like, what is it ah! now? What is the What is the issue? And then it's like, oh, somebody uploaded a photo. I'm like, fuck off. Mm-hmm. It's not an issue. It's a 
upload, you know. That's a yeah. notification. Yeah, it, basically. But yeah, but uh, I guess I shouldn't say anything because my job, I had one phone interview with the HR person, one with my current boss, and then they brought me in and I did five different panel interviews with two five people each. panel Just interviews? Two people, boom, talking to them, half an hour. Next two come in, boom, talk to them for half an hour. Oh my God. Next two, boom, talk to them for half an hour. Yeah. That is wrong. It was fun. I actually liked it. It was, I had a good time. The I, only, like the first guy was the only one who was a dick and he's still kind of a dick to me, but um, he was with the other guy who's like trying to, like he had worked at SpaceX at some point and I, I found that out later, but it's like he did. He, no, this oh, is actually oh, a cool the, guy. I okay. like this guy. Yeah. But he, uh, he was just like. He he pulled the whole thing like the SpaceX like well who is the second guy on the moon you know like if you were really you know so he's like yeah. hey Buzz, what's your favorite Buzz thing Aldrin. out of that out of the catalog and I'm like oh yeah well this thing because it's super cool he's like oh yeah I was just checking to see if you'd actually done some research I'm like why do you think I'm here right now I'm like <laughs> I know how much you're gonna pay me I wouldn't just walk in without doing some fucking research right wait who's who's who was doing the gotcha question the the dickhead no the the, the, SpaceX, the, the guy. SpaceX guy because he didn't ask me much but the yeah. other guy was just like. Huh, really? You know, and, and like when... Did he's you get like, it right with Buzz Aldrin? Uh, he didn't ask me that. Oh. But, but he was he was asking me things like specific to that field that I'm in now. Ah, okay. Or, you know, it, well, their products in that field. But, but yeah, the other guy was basically just like... It was like, so they lay you off or did they fire you? And I'm like, they laid me off. It was literally, do you remember the day they canceled the NBA? It was the next day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, they panicked and they let me go. And he's like, well, did they ask you back? And I'm like, actually, yes, they did. And I told them to fuck off. Because I said, if, it, if you were going to do that to me, then what's going to stop you from doing it to me again? Mm -hmm. And I suspect they tried to do it so they wouldn't have to pay me their unemployment benefit, taxes, whatever the shit that is. Yeah. Actually, I, the funny thing is, it doesn't matter. It always goes back to the last company that you worked for. It's yeah. always their responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So get fucked, them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, he was that guy's a complete dick. But yeah, I had like really good conversations with with all the people that I've that I've talked to so far, mm -hmm. which is good. Like most of them have been have been like just conversations. Yeah, we've talked about the job for like ten minutes and then mm -hmm. bullshit for the rest. Yep. I think most like, places have moved away from the whole adversarial thing. Yeah. You know, like like the phone book shit that they asked you that one time. Yeah, you know, if you know. it had been phone books, that'd be different. Yeah. <laughs> it was just books. Oh, just books. Was yeah. it just books? It was just books. And I was so like... So the guy didn't even get the question, the gotcha correct. question right. right. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, that's but, the most insane question I've ever heard. <laughs> like, I can deal with the like, tell me about a time that you, you know that you resolved a conflict that you sure. didn't think you'd be able to resolve or, or shit like, like that. You know, like, yeah. I mean, I, we I'm too to, much of a perfectionist. I mean, one yeah. place I worked, we had, you know, like the, the aquarium style conference rooms, you know, all glass. And they would, one of them, they would, I don't think my boss ever did this, but like people love their doing the, how many ping pong balls would it take to fill up this room? Cause at least that's like a, you know, put some math, like, all right, ping pong balls about an inch, you know, mm -hmm. this room is, you know, like you can start to, come up with an answer like the phone book thing it makes more sense than books because yeah you know, yeah you're just looking at resident right you know, i mean like, like households know, yeah i mean like, there's libraries there's a bunch of dumb fucks in the city that don't own a single book yeah yeah but what it, are they trying to do are they just trying to see what your thought process is my thought process yeah. was tell them to fuck off immediately, well, which sure, is what sure. happened. Yeah, and I was all the better for it. You've done hiring before, so <sighs> yeah, but I didn't do. I did what you're talking about. Like I was, just, I was like, we know your qualifications. You know, I understand this stuff. You know, what did you do there? Like, uh, how many were group projects? How many were individual things? You know, because I'm going through a portfolio as well. You know, right, so it'd right. be like, what's your, what was your input on this? You know, how many people worked on this? Because you get a lot of people who. You know, try and do, try and be like, try to pass off other people's work as theirs. Right. So at least I have them on record saying, "Oh no, well I worked on this, this, and this." You know, because yeah. Jen interviewed and uh, one person who applied had some stuff that was actually designed by Jen. They had just reworked it and tried oh. to submit it as part of their portfolio. 
She's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to tell you this, but you might want to take that one down. Yeah. So, but 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 that was all I do. Sir, that's the starry night. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, but no, I I would just get conversation on be like, hey, you know, uh, what did you like about the last place you were at? I've had that question a couple times. Yeah. Which I kind of I I like because it allows me to. uh, Yeah. Like, what are you looking for? You know. I don't like the where do you see yourself in five years? Oh God, then it's like, asking because 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 that you're asking better questions. Yeah, exactly. Because that's usually the answer is like, well, I kind of want your job, you know. Yeah, and that's what I'd say. I'm like, I could say I would love to, I would love to have a vice president position, but that's what you are. <laughs> so I'd be saying I want to take your job, which I really celebrating don't. the five year anniversary of this question by firing yeah. you. Yeah, I know. So generally sitting about where you are, but with a more impressive nether region. <laughs> 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 nice. Hey, Kyle. Uh, Kyle made it. I got a lot of. I've, I've been getting a lot of. So tell me a little bit about yourself. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I like long walks on the beach, dogs, uh, pina mm-hmm. coladas, getting caught in the rain. Yeah, and that stuff's tricky because they much can't you... say, "Are you married? Do you have kids?" Like that's just a big no-no from HR. Right. So it's kind of like they're letting you bring it up. That I think that's why that is so open-ended like that. Yeah. I know. And well, I don't tell them anything about any... I guess they probably assume I'm a spinster or a, a hemster, mm-hmm. whatever the male version of a spinster is. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's weird because I don't know if I'm supposed to launch into my personal stuff or my work stuff. So I just... I, tend... I tell them how old I am that I like... <laughs> <laughs> video games, movies, and and bicycles, yeah. and you should tell me to do a podcast, but like a not in like a cool way, not like a. It's I'm, actually on my resume. I'm a guy, you know, like he has a beard, and yeah, we talk. Well, about yeah, sports. they should have been able to tell. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as as soon as well, I, pop I mean, up like, on the Zoom, know, I don't call it a podcast. I call it there's voice a, work. I'm saying there's a way of like bringing it out without being the guy who's just like, yeah, I, you know, we have a podcast. It's yeah. like, yeah. well. I did actually talk about it with the guy I interviewed sure. with I'm, last week. I'm saying it can be a conversation starter if you do it the right way. You yeah. just don't want to be yeah. that, like dropping it on a date, like you know, like yeah. oh good. I have it. I I do have it you, on my you resume. And you guys argue like, about who's better, LeBron or <laughs> Kyrie or something. Uh, LeBron is the greatest LeBron. of all time according to the points he scored last yeah. night. So okay. <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> Greatest basketball player of all time. Michael Jordan. Yeah, you're right. I hate him, but... It's, it's the right answer. Yeah. I hate him, but it's... Greatest it's... basketball player of all time. Yeah, I mean... You can say Michael no, Jordan. No, it, it's got to be the, Jordan. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually giving it serious thought. Like, I mean, I'm the like... The only possible person who can... Detlef Shrimp. No. Uh, Bill Russell. Bill Russell is like... Bill was, Russell. That's what I was thinking, but I was like, I was trying to do the, would Bill Russell playing in Jordan's era or this era work? And I think the answer is no. But Jordan could step into today's era and wipe the floor with everybody if he was 22. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, like, I don't know if, like, Bill Russell... He could also dunk on all those yeah, could, Naismith guys. Yeah, Bill Russell, you just, you can't, you can't judge it. Because, I mean, he yeah. had the will. Like, he willed teams to win just like right. jordan did he had the same that like was my hesitation was and like, he was also because it's and he also had like a photographic memory of people like he could tell you specific plays in specific games and what time they happened like that sort of shit and he knew everything about every other player on every other team always so it's like someone that smart about everything also he has 11 rings i think or something 12 13 uh, uh, no i think it's nine, nine actually i thought it was i thought it was double oh wait no it might have been nine straight okay i think yeah, he has I, I don't remember how many he gets it is. 11 total yeah but it's also like yeah, you know, know. the area it's, he was playing in right. was like you know there's no shot clock in the i was the point guard there's you know no, that sort of shit uh, mm-hmm. whatever you know camping under the basket rules or anything yeah i don't even remember what that's called uh uh, lane by what, is, uh, what the fuck is that called when you what's that when you camp like on either side it's the fucking call when you're like under the basket and you're not moving you're not guarding and you're oh shit yeah. now that you say that it, it's, it's not camping yeah, it's a uh, uh, fuck it's just lane violation yeah paint humping yeah no i think they just call it lane violation okay it might actually. be yeah, yeah. yeah. pele but, is but an the... answer kyle but it's the wrong answer for the wrong sport mm-hmm. yeah he is a soccer or football or football from Brazil. Yeah. But famous for the bicycle kick. But yeah, I'd say LeBron. I mean LeBron's like in the top famous five. For volcano. <laughs> LeBron's really good. Like there's no well, denying that. See, the, 
here's my thing with LeBron and Shaq, I think are very similar guys in that they don't want teammates to not like them. And they also don't want, they want to be liked by everybody. And Jordan never gave a shit about that. Like all he cared about was winning. And I think if either of them had the drive, like, you know, and basically in the off season, LeBron's better than Shaq. Shaq basically just took the off season and was like, I'm going to eat pizza and chill and I'll work myself into shape by the end of the season. You know, whereas LeBron still keeps working out, but I just don't think he has like the maniacal focus that Jordan always did, or he would have won a lot more. But anyway, fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would argue now hire me. I would be the, I I would argue (laughs) that LeBron's actually been on higher overall quality teams than Jordan ever was. I, I mean, would it, argue against that because really? I mean, he had Pippen for Pippen, for so many yes, years. but I mean, like then it was like you know some years it was scrubs. I mean, if, I mean sometimes had, there was a revolving door of other dudes on the yeah, Bulls, sure. but those other dudes could all could also ball the fuck right. out. I know, I yeah, mean, except for like Bill Luke Cartwright. Kickley or whatever his <laughs> name was, Luke Longley, Longley. That's why. Yeah, Bill Wennington. Yeah, Bill Cartwright. I just said who Cartwright. had the ugliest free throw shot I've yes, ever yeah. seen. Loved it. Yeah. I knew a girl in school that was like, she shot like that. And she, purposely, because she liked Bill Cartwright. Ah, she was a yeah. Bill Cartwright fan. Yeah. She shot like him. I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not dissing She's Pippen in any, player, any way, shape, or form. But I'm just saying, like, you take throughout LeBron's career, I think some of the people he's played he's side by side. He's had awesome. more all-stars. Like, you know, well, yeah, people of, like, 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 the in, high-tier quality instead of, like, a really, really, really solid second yeah, guy. Yeah, in Miami, they absolutely should have won. Yeah. Every season he was there, yeah. they, they're they're like it's not even a debate. It should have just been like, no, you should have fucking destroyed everyone. Yeah, yeah. both of them, Young, him, and D Wade. Yeah, that should, yeah. That should have been wiping the floor with everybody. Yep. Why are we talking about sports? I don't know sports. What? Because it just came up. Because it. Because I was talking about DJ's was, job interview. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about white guys with podcasts generally talking about sports. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Anyway, Dream Team uh, is the best team of any sport to ever be assembled. Hmm final answer even with yeah. christian leitner <laughs> yeah even with christian leitner <laughs> leitner could have been polishing their shoes i, I know and it they just, still would have beaten it still just was such croatia a 900 stupid to three. joy i mean it was what was that it was it was throwing a bone to the college people, basically, basically it was like this is how we always stopped making it, yeah. it a college team yeah. yeah who was it that got passed over it was oh, isaiah thomas isaiah thomas because but they, they didn't want isaiah they thomas all on the team. hated yeah. isaiah thomas was that no, I'm trying to think what year versus the Dream Team. That was 92? 92, yes. Yeah. So that wasn't post-HIV announcement magic. It was. It was, so that's why yeah. they hated Isaiah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was part of it. Uh, Jordan right, hated him, too. Like, like basically, uh, just about everybody hated him. I mean, I thought it... it, it, it I was trying Did to go Isaiah with my Thomas brain. Thomas talk shit about... Isaiah magic. was one of the first people who was like, I don't want to play against him. Like, he's going to give me the hiv. Yeah. And like, Jesus, and like, and not in a cool way. Like, I mean, that there's a cool way to say something like that. <laughs> no, but, there's but not. I'm just saying, like, in a completely untactful way. Gotcha. I guess you would say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just like it was incredibly homophobic and idiotic, and you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm going to get age from sitting on a toilet seat, kind of thinking. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still so Isaiah Thomas look, was the Reagan of the NBA. Here's the thing, like I. I'm a little bit on that camp. I mean, it, unfortunately, the NBA is a context for it, and it, that is just dangerous. I mean, unfortunately, it is. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but it it does present, a As, especially at that time. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah it, where there was no sort of treatment whatsoever. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And, like, and I always did wonder about that. Like, how are they gonna, you know, if if someone elbows him in the mouth and you know splits his lip open, well, they, and then that's they, exactly then what happened. Cut their elbow on him, you know, something like that. You just that was what there's happened. a lot like, of second to last for risk. game was like a. There was he got cut or somebody got cut on him and they had to stop the whole fucking. That's game. right. Yeah, I had forgotten. And then about it was that. basically like. But then again, at any game where there's blood, they stop everything immediately. Not like this. Okay. <laughs> this was like a silence fell over the arena of like really. Yeah, like like they were watching the fucking execution yeah. or something. It was it was uncomfortable yeah. as fuck. Well, it, and it's weird today to think that he does. He still has HIV. Yes. And it's like, that was like back in 91, we were like, oh, fuck, Magic Johnson's going to like die in a couple of years. Right. And it, that was 32 years ago now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hi, still around. Mm-hmm. That's what lots of money can buy you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what treatments he's getting. That I mean, his young. name isn't normal he had Johnson. To have, <laughs> <laughs> he had to have taken experimental stuff at some point that I'm sure they found that worked. 
Cause I mean, but now they have treatments luckily, but it's like, I, I'm just, I guess he got real lucky, you know, with whatever, whatever treatment they had back then that it didn't progress from there. It's, so it's not necessarily the the HIV or the full blown AIDS itself that kills you, right? Mm-hmm. It's being vulnerable to everything yeah, else yeah, that kills the you. Yeah, yeah, the And when you're an athlete with the money to stay healthy, yeah. When you're a premier athlete with the money to stay healthy, or yeah. if you're just fucking rich, like, yeah. But still, like, I it just it's just thinking about that when it happened, being like, oh shit. And now it's like, yeah, that, that's now. Now we're like, yeah, yeah Magic mean, Johnson. I'm, like you almost forget that he has it at all. Right. right. Well, I mean, I'm not. Again, I'm not trying to be a dick nor wish think ill will people. But mm-hmm. like, if if he was a normal person, think about how long we've known about Michael J. Fox and Parkinson's. I mean, yeah, a normal person probably would have succumbed to it by now. Oh yeah. He, yeah. Without money, you know. So in the '90s, yeah, yeah. we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. I don't know. Epidemic is, is that is that yeah. the right word? Yeah, it was an epidemic in the eighties, and still wasn't good in the nineties. So, can you tell we don't want to talk about this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got twenty five minutes about talking about. Ch- Chuck Magic just texted Johnson. me. Said, "Lol, oh my god, start this show." <laughs> You're not here, Chuck. You don't get to make the rules. <laughs> You want to come in and make rules? You come in. Then you can maybe make a rule. I, I did write him back. Said, so whatever, Chuck, you're not editing. Yeah. It's all right. I'm just going to clap. Yeah. And... Oh, yeah. since we're, it's a tangential, but also, it's a, it's a tangential, but also like turning into a recommendation. I did not know that Harrison Ford also had Parkinson's. Is this, uh, was this a known thing? I did not know that. No. Well, I mean, unless it's just supposed to be a character thing in his new show, which would probably be in poor taste, but, you know, that just seems like not a thing you would do. Unless he actually had it, mm. you wouldn't give somebody of his age a character that condition, and have an actor shake for no reason. Mm. That just seems like bad taste. But anyway, I was going to say, regardless of his actual condition, that new show he's in called Shrinking, mm-hmm. which is from the same people as Ted Lasso, is so far fantastic. Hmm. Well, that's a good uh, thing. Looks like he doesn't, but I mean, he's eighty years old, so okay. That's a bad maybe idea then. I, I don't know. It feels like a bad thing to do. I don't know. Maybe he just has some fine motor control. He's been in like 18 plane wrecks. I, so. Sure. I just was like, the, the, I don't know. He's that was the John those, Denver of That was one of those things where it was like, oh, like this can't possibly, like my brain just went, no one would write this into a character unless the, you were there to, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. There's like nobody generally makes a, a, a female character in a movie pregnant unless they, the actor actually is, and you're covering for it. I mean, some, I don't know. It happens. Yeah. Anyway, should we do a podcast? Let's get out of here, shall we? Okay. I'm Harbco. And I'm Slappy. And this is Podcast. All right, let's actually do it. You do a clap. Okay. I'm just getting positioned. Oh, so I probably should look at what number of episodes this was again for... I forget. 568. Okay. 568. Here we go. All right, welcome to the Bamcast. Hey, hey Bamcast. Bamcast. Uh, episode 568. Wow. Numbers keep going up. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm Harlow. I'm Mackie. I'm BJ. And what we do each and every episode of this here at Bamcast is we go and we watch ourselves a quote-unquote bad movie. Then we come mm-hmm. in here and talk about it. And at the very end, they get ratings. Good bad movies, enjoyable bad movies. They get one to five jocks and robot jocks. Robot, robot jocks. However, there are bad, bad movies and stay away. They get a negative sliding scale, one to five bags and giant bags of trash. Boo. Giant bags of trash. Asterix, pay attention. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, we are back. I, I, I don't even know what year we're on. It's a lot. 1976. Well, no, no. I meant like oh. what year of uh, Black Exploitation History Month. Oh. It's back. <sighs> the, the joyous time of the year. Yeah. Yes. Hey. It's back. Uh, you don't know. That's what matters, is that it's back. Yes. It might be 10. Uh, I could it's, not tell It's you a anymore. number. It's a high number. <laughs> well, uh, with great numbers comes dwindling numbers of movies that are left to watch. Uh, you know, like uh, Uncle Ben famously said about the rice. Um, what, yeah. <laughs> where the fuck are you going? <laughs> uh, I still don't want to talk about this movie. Um, 
We watched 1975 sixes, uh, Velvet Jones. Yep, we did. Velvet Smooth, not Velvet Jones. Why yeah, did I say Velvet, Velvet Jones? Because you're thinking of yeah, Cleopatra Jones. I am. I, Velvet Smooth. Also, I think Velvet Jones is a character film. I don't know, but Velvet Smooth—that is the name of the movie. Sorry. Uh, by the way, the first uh, Black Exploitation History Month uh-huh. was 2012. Oh wow! Oh, so this is a year, year 11. eleven. Wow. Uh, actually, year twelve. Did we do one? We did. Oh yeah. Did we do one pandemic year? Mm, no, we didn't. Just we didn't no. do 2020. Probably not. Did we do one 2021? We, we did one 2020 because that was right before the pandemic. That's we right. We didn't do one 2021. Okay. Because we were doing variety hours. That's right. We did one last year. Yep. Okay. And we're doing one this year. So it's. Yeah. But as we've years. watched so many of these movies, uh, unfortunately, the the choices are now dwindling in terms of like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, all right, not I'm not singling out this genre. A lot of genre movies in the 70s uh, featured heavily uh, uncomfortable situations for women. That was a uh, cheap plot device used by many low budget movies throughout yes. the 70s and into the 80s and even today. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, especially like in that time period, you know. I mean, you know, you're from your death wish of like, you know, like a lot of those movies wallowed in it in a way right. that is no longer acceptable or comfortable to watch right not that it was back then but it's certainly through modern eyes it's like no please don't do that taking that into consideration that not that lops unfortunately a large swath of 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 black exploitation and Mm -hmm. 70 movies in general off the table i mean that's why we haven't watched a lot of like female in the jungle movies because they usually end up being in some sort of terrible pow style camp with rape and stuff and it's like no thank you um yep. so yeah uh that being said this is a one of the lowest budget cheapest made ones we've ever watched i mean besides like a rudy ray moore joint but well i will tell you it is from the director of force four michael fink okay now force four i believe was one we watched right before the pandemic started and that one a uh, the the guy who plays King in this was also a character in that movie as well. Okay. But that one was has to be one of our lowest rated we've ever done because that one was uh, four karate experts are hired to retrieve a stolen African witch doctor fetish doll. I vaguely remember that think, yeah, sort okay. of thing I, happening on and the podcast. And it was what? just these four people going around uh, randomly kicking people badly. Yeah, but I seem to remember like that one. This is also four people going around randomly kicking people badly. This one is way more cohesive than that, but not by much. Even though I just said way more, that does not make it cohesive. No. Uh, Because Force 4 was incomprehensible. Yeah, I I must be thinking of a different movie. Yeah, it also had an actor named Warhawk Tanzania. Oh, yeah. Who played a character named Adam. (laughs) God damn it. Warhawk, yeah. Tanzania. Yes. And his I name like that Adam. you mean they'd go into like the you know colonizing news voice because that's what you feel like you have to say. When... Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like discover. It's discovering a new place. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking HMS so... Beagle just discovered <laughs> Warhawk. But but yes, this is among the lowest budget, poorly made movies yeah. we've ever watched. It's up there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is like this is like student high school student film bad levels of i mean to the point it's that a little bit better than that maybe i mean there there is a guy in late act two maybe the beginning of act three he's just a background guy that is in the police station he's just mm-hmm. talking about some shitty scene or whatever yeah he's had his wallet stolen yeah and all of a sudden you're reminded of like oh that guy's acting yeah <laughs> like that guy's acting what the fuck have all these other people been doing for an hour because <laughs> um, mm-hmm. it's like He's not saying anything particularly interesting, but your eyes are immediately drawn to like, what's his story? Like, what where, what happened to his wallet? I, I was immediately more interested in his story. Also, I, I you know I think I was immediately drawn in because it seemed like a it seemed like an out of place scene for. I know I'm jumping way ahead of the plot of the movie that doesn't mm-hmm. exist, but uh, it just seemed like a guy that was trying to give a, a suspect description but not sound racist, and I thought that's where it was going in in 1976 because mm-hmm. he was just like hey, he's about. Your height and uh, dark hair, and it's like you, dark. You, you don't want to say black, do you? Like or yeah. whatever, <laughs> like Latino, whatever your your other descriptor is, and you're just trying yeah, to be but, cool. But you you pinned it exactly. Like yeah. th- this guy is showing emotion right. and passion and interest. Yeah, 
and acting, yeah. whereas everyone else <clears throat> that's delivering every other line in their mo- in this movie... They're, they're like when a jock appears on SNL, everyone else. It's just like, I am reading a cue card, <laughs> and reading's really not even my strong suit. Yeah. So... Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it feels very much like the first rehearsal of a scene, mm-hmm. but they just filmed it. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we're good. We don't need any more takes. Film is expensive. And moved yeah. on. Yeah. But, I mean, that's also a black exploitation staple. Sure. So to speak. Because so much of this was people who didn't know how to make a movie, but had a camera. Sure. And I don't, like I said, I, there, there's no fault in trying other than, you know, I guess continually failing. You know, like, you you, you know, to the point, like, you're, you're watching this movie and it's like every once in a while when, like, something happens and it's like, oh, that's what you do when you're making a movie. Interesting. Like, and mm-hmm. you, you remember this all of a sudden that it just happens so few and far between that. It's like, Oh yeah, you actually lit this right. Or, Oh, you didn't have the boom mic halfway through the frame, you know, like, not <laughs> just not peeking in like, yeah. like, like it literally like in the midway point of the frame, like where the horizon line should be in a frame on, you know, a standard yeah, frame. And you can the see mic the is. mic moving back and forth between depending on whose dialogue it is. Yeah. That was so fun to, so, so, <laughs> So fun to watch that thing just like ping back and forth yeah. every time. It's just like this little penis on the bottom of the screen going, "Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, hey. But yeah." They went with the low boom too, with no, uh, you know, cover or anything to make yeah. it blend. It was just the, the silver microphone, bare, bare shotgun mic mm-hmm. on the bottom of the screen. So, anywho, um, well, did they even have lav mics back then? Well, the, uh, so th- it happened again. There was yes. a there was an overhead boom that came in later where they put a green sock on it to uh, to hide it in the house plants, but you could still see it. Mm-hmm. So at least they tried. I mean, it yeah. was like it was that one was a little more. Effort. Yeah, it was like, oh, they put a, a green windsock on it. So it almost blended into the houseplants. But there it is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. But yeah. OK, so basic plot of the movie. There is a there's a guy named King and he runs. They say he runs the numbers game, but he's running underground. Well, actually, no, that's the other guy that's running underground gambling. We never actually see him really actively doing the numbers game. Just that we know from mm-hmm. other black exploitation movies now what the numbers game is. Right. It's the underground lottery system based on uh, the horse bets or the horse races. Is that what it was? Like the positions they came or in? Or it's just literally a number, no, it's just a numbers. number draw. It's just numbers. Oh, is that, yeah. it was, okay. I thought it, I thought we figured it's, out it was bit based on something because you had to have like a outside force so they couldn't just be like, oh, nobody it, won. I think it could be. I think it could be based on yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's also so many of these movies use the the run of the numbers Mm -hmm. because it feels like almost like a victimless crime. Whereas it's because inevitably, as we find out, velvet smooth has to help him find out who's ripping him off. Right. Yeah. And you do the numbers game because it's like, Oh, he's not hurting anybody because somebody wins some money. You know, it's not like this guy's actually a pimp or a mafia boss or something that is doing all this shit that is exploiting or doing harm to the community in some way. Whereas the numbers is just uh, it's some gambling. It's not a big deal. They're keeping the money in the community. You know that sort of thing. It's it's no. It always feels like it comes back to the numbers game in all these movies because that's a crime that we can be like, that's not too bad. Right. They can it's not help even him like drugs. Out. I mean drugs and I mean yeah prostitution in in in. But black it, dynamite. It, I sell drugs to the community. <laughs> but I mean prostitution in, in, in its purest sense. If the person is making the choice to do that, should not necessarily be looked upon as as a crime per se you know i mean it, it's a choice but yes the, but at that time but the reality is, is that very it, yeah it, it you know there's sex landscape. trafficking and a lot of like other things mm-hmm. that go in you know it's just like it's like uh socialism communism and libertarianism these things are great on paper they don't actually work because of mm-hmm. human nature uh yes <laughs> um all correct right so uh i'm saying that like it, it's similar but like a numbers game is literally like well the the the, the state may or may not be running a lotto and you're just doing the same thing but you're you know, fucking over the man, and mm-hmm. that's everyone can get behind that. I mean, you know, the, yeah. the spirit of America is about fuck the man. You know, taxation mm-hmm. without representation. It's in our core inherent values. People are always wondering why we're against the government. It's like that's where we came from. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we should always be at our at our government's throats. <laughs> that's our fucking nature. But uh, anyway, but anyway, yeah, I mean, say like that's the numbers game is mm-hmm. like yes. There's no mm-hmm. I mean, if drugs yeah. is like you're hurting somebody because somebody's dying on the drugs prostitution. You may be hurting the women and the here numbers it's just like, game. Just, yeah. yeah, they they gave their money willingly. Yeah. But yes, somebody is uh, siphoning money slash. Also, there's just a, a hooded gang mask or mask mm-hmm. gang that goes around. There's a group about eight guys that just run around and beat up local shop owners it, and rob them. At the beginning of the movie, it's not clear. It just seems like they're just 
terrorizing random people. I guess we find out over the course of the movie all the people that they hit were involved in being drops for the numbers game. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, at first it just seems like they're beating up, you know, vegetable fruit stand guy who does magic tricks for the kids. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what did that guy do? What the hell are yeah, you beating him up That guy for? ran a candy store. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Um, wasn't there like a really old guy they beat the shit out of too? Like even older than that guy? I thought there was like a guy with a mm-hmm. cane or something too. I mean, it was just like, it seemed it was just, at first it was just like, oh, this is random, you know, thuggery happening. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because the first guy, I mean, it opens with a dude running a laundromat and they're like ringing the bell and he he's like, wait, hang on. And then comes out and just yeah. gets the crap kicked out of him. And they take like literally at maximum $40. Which even in 1970 wasn't that much money to get the shit beat out of you for. You could almost buy a new Lincoln for forty dollars in 1970. I'm sure you are right. You that is a down payment on a house in 1975. Yeah. So was a I, sta- I stand house corrected. Thousand dollars in 1970. That's like gas for a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, at first it, it, there's no. It's just like why are these guys beating this up? Then we're going to introduce King, and King very quickly is like, hey, number two guy, do you know what's going on? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Ah, screw that. I'm going to call Velvet. She's the pro. Mm-hmm. We don't really know what Velvet's qualifications are or other than her name is Velvet Smooth, so clearly she's here to kick ass and take names. The poster tells us she's a private eye. Okay. The poster tells us that. I don't remember the movie once It ever. does not. In fact, I thought she was some kind of like kung fu prostitute because... <laughs> I mean, I'm not. Tr- I'm not uh, yeah. trying to be disparaging <laughs> no. her, but she seems like the way part... she's introduced is very prostitutish. It just seems like you know, it's like I will kick ass, but I will also just fuck whomever to get information or mm-hmm. where I need to be, or just I don't know because it's fun. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, let's not deny that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not being disparaging to her. It just seemed like yeah. it was like, all right, you know, you know, w- you know, whoring by day and fighting crime by night. I don't know. It's that's it's how it's down yeah. for whatever. Yeah. Seems pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, no, okay, she's a private eye, and mm-hmm. uh, she has a group of two other ladies that work for her. One of them is maybe studying to be a lawyer. I don't know, That's the yes. way it sounds, because they, sure, yeah, they make... say if she keeps studying like this, she'll be on the Supreme Court in a year. Okay. Which implies that she's studying a lot. Yeah. Also, that would be weird to go straight from not having passed the bar to the Supreme Court within a year, but... That's how much she's studying. That's really impressive. Yeah. She's doing great. Yeah. She's going to spend 90 seconds as a page, yeah. and then... I guess that was the San- that was yeah. the day in the Sandra Day O'Connor. It only took her a day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She uh, was on the short list, from mm-hmm. what I've heard. Yeah, um, but yeah, and then it's just them going around and investigating and or getting mm-hmm. jumped and lots of incoherency for about the next hour. I mean, well, it's just, it's, it's yeah. immediately it's this movie is strange in that it kind of solves the case three times before they finally end the movie, mm-hmm. but. When we're first, we first meet his number two, uh, what is his name? Carl or something? Cedric? Dang it. Now I got to look up this Which dude. Guy? The the guy. The second in command. Yeah. The one that they suspect. Calvin. 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 Okay. Calvin. So we, one of them has to sit with Calvin and go over the books because they told her, like, check everything. You know, if, 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 if there's a zero out of place, we need to know about it. And he's immediately like, bitch, I got this. You don't need to be looking at my books. Right, and then he's, yeah, he like takes if you a call. See a movie, it's like, oh, it's him. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> right. Yes, because he takes a call, kicks her out of the room, and immediately is like, "Oh, you missed a drop. You didn't get them. We need to fix this." And it's like, okay, so he's the bad guy, right? Because because one of them gets away immediately. It was because when when Velvet sends out her girls, they follow one of the uh, one of the bag men, who those guys chase him and. She is able to beat the crap out of eight, nine, ten guys and let him get away. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that Calvin's all pissed off about later. But all of these fight scenes are just chicks with kicks. A lot of kicks coming from these chicks. A lot throughout. It's, and it's all really. It's bad. It's some of the worst choreographed fighting we've seen. Yeah. It was. It, all, is, it, was all it, it is. I mean, it literally looks like when you and your friends were eight years old, and you're like, "We know karate," mm-hmm. even though we've we've only watched a karate movie. You know, we watched the Karate Kid and then wanted to go kick each other. This is what this movie looks like, right? But also, still kids, like where you don't have full motor control over your body. Correct. Like, I mean, right. where it's just like you know, you go for a kick and you're like, "Oh wow, that went way higher and further out than I meant to," and I mm-hmm. looked insane when I did it. 
Um, yeah, this whole thing was choreographed by Bruce Lee's brother, Bad. Yeah, it's not good in any way. And I wish I could say they're enjoyable in a bad way, but they're really not. They're just kind of, they keep going on, and it's like, okay, I've seen her kick this dude so many times. That's one of the problems, and also kind of one of the funny things about this movie is it. we'll watch the same person get beaten up like three or four times, and it's not like they're trying to be clever and swap them out or anything. It's just, no, they keep running back and getting kicked again, and mm-hmm. then they'll fall, you know, they'll, they'll fall down for a minute and then get back in line to get kicked again. Um, yeah, it's and it's, it's a lot of like six dudes are fighting one person and, and five of them are waiting while one's right yeah. fighting them. I mean, I mean, just stupidly like doing the idle animation from like Street Fighter while they're behind them. You know, it's just like, yeah. dude. Well, and it's it's also people who, like I've said, they own a camera, but they don't know how to make a movie mm-hmm. because they don't film anything in a way that hides that. Oh, that punch never connected. That kick never connected. They're just like, oh, let's lock it down and shoot it from the side. Yeah. There, there, there are a lot of strange, and I, I guess I wouldn't even call them choices, just, I don't know, how things panned out, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in a better movie, there's a way to do this and have it work and be effective. It, and this movie is just annoying as shit, uh, where you'll have one of these crazy fight scenes where it's just, it's almost like a Donnybrook because people are just mm-hmm. flying around with no sense of choreography or anything like that. Yeah, there's a point late in the movie where people are just running past. Yeah. Like whoever's fighting. Right. Just run by them. Um but like they will do this and like you know the soundtrack will kick into high gear and then it will cut away to like somebody coming to that scene with no soundtrack and mm-hmm. hardly any foley for the people. So you have this like to like this yeah, it also does a weird <laughs> walking up to the next yeah. scene and it's like all the fight scenes in the soundtrack also have a weird uh, reverse section in all of them. Oh, OK. I didn't yeah. know that. It, yeah. Like like the the music itself is reversed at certain points in the song. Oh, OK. So it's doing the r- 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 z- z- thing and it's really unnerving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in other movies, there's there's an interesting thing to be like there's comedy and or uh, juxtaposition to be had in editing like that, where you have this cacophonous fight scene happening to mm-hmm. over to complete silence of just some people coming up on it. You know, like, I mean, mm-hmm. you could have that build up to something in this movie. It's just, it's almost like they edited the, the whole scene and then decided to be like, you know, what if we splice some of this other, you know, action in between, but it was mm-hmm. already like finally edited with the soundtrack and everything. So they just, hard cutting these other little scenes, mm-hmm. you know, instead of like, well, blending yeah, with in, the, in the one where the casino gets robbed later on the underground casino yeah. where she has taken the owner back to her place. Right. To, to, yeah. Cause it's sexy time. Mm-hmm. That one's probably the most egregious of that because there's, it's, there's a lot more th- happening yeah. at the casino itself where people are getting, they're screaming and mm-hmm. there's one chick who fights back and gets beat up and, and just, and I people really like, understand who she was. She she's just a dealer, but also she's one of the Charlie's angels ladies or something. I don't I, know. I feel like velvet has a conversation with her the first time she goes into the casino and it was like, Oh, you're working. And she's like, yeah, you know, I need the extra money, something like that. Okay. So like she might've been on velvet's team at some point mm-hmm. in time. I, yes. Oh, the blackjack dealer. Yeah. Yeah. So, something like that. But, but yeah, there's another scene that happens where another crazy fight. And then the, the two detectives are getting there and, mm-hmm. and it's just like, they're silently walking through hallways and stuff mm-hmm. and cutting back and forth between this crazy fight scene. And it's just like, Oh, st- yeah, Stop that, that and the sex scene. There's just there's way better ways to edit. Yeah, to to build tension. I think and just, it, they it, it makes don't the, understand any of it. It makes the the harshness of the stra- soundtrack even worse when you're taken away from it for a second. When you're Come, jarring, yeah, you when you jarringly cut away from it, go back, and it's just like you know, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 a lot of the scenes have that, uh, just that auditory alarm feel mm-hmm. like like that like that cue from Kill Bill that. You know, like, yeah. or it's just like, ah, stop. Like, there's nothing I like about everything that's happening with the sound here. It's mm-hmm. just, this is off putting. Yeah. But, uh, but so yeah, they fight a they, lot and then they, yeah, they point the finger lot. at Calvin. Mm-hmm. It is his name, right? Yeah. Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. Because when there's one decent chase scene where th- with another bag man in the middle of the day mm-hmm. where this guy, this guy books. He like, runs like, so hard. 
Yeah, all like, of those guys run so hard. I give credit to all of the everyone in that scene because they're all wearing like dress shoes too and they, jeans or or like polyester yeah. pants. But man, they are trucking through New York City, and it, it like that. Yeah. That's the only one that actually feels kind of like it's got some real energy to it. And then he's swinging that's the briefcase. Because those dudes are running. Yeah, yeah. He, and was also, he was also throwing random like kids at them to like. <laughs> yeah, block their of way. course. I, why do you think kids exist? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if you're being Fired. chased, chuck a kid in the way. Okay. They'll trip them. There you go. Good. Kids are resilient. They'll get right back up. They'll mm-hmm. be like, "Hey, what happened?" Children bounce. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But but they eventually catch that guy, stab him, and this is where we're introduced to the two detectives. That have been checking things out. One one guy, I guess, who's going to be the lieutenant or something. I, I forget what he calls him. And then it's his new partner. Who? I got the I got the guy the idea that the guy with the hat actually was in charge of something. Uh, he was. I just I don't remember what they what they said. But yeah. he's uh, this guy. He's the one who's he's the cop who's working with everybody. You know, he's 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 in good with the pimps. He's not going to turn them in as long as they keep things under control. You know, that sort of guy, right. you know, that he's, sort of cop that we're used to like seeing. like an actual, you know, peace officer, like where maybe you let some minor shit go if it's mm-hmm. not going to rile everybody up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whereas the other cop, you know, the, the, uh, his new partner is just like, no, we need to arrest these people because they, after, after this runner is murdered, they go back. Like we are introduced not introduced, but again, Calvin is there with with King. And this is when King is just like, nobody else knew about it, so it had to be you, and starts beating the shit out of Calvin. Yeah, it was some... And kind of like solves the mystery himself without Velvet's help, really. Because yeah. Velvet had said, hey, man, it's him. And he's like, nah, he's my best buddy since childhood. He wouldn't do that. And then he's like, yeah, don't investigate me, Velvet. And then so... King's like, all right, yeah, leave him alone, go away. Yeah, and then apparently he plans some sort of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give all the information to you that you will pass on to Velvet minus one drop that she won't know about, but only you'll know about. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's 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 con- it's a convoluted thing of like only you had this information, so because that's the one well, that got hit, it has to be you, Fredo. But it's yeah. well, yeah, yeah, he does catch him because he said that the other chick had the logs, and that was the only drop that wasn't on the logs because he immediately blames Velvet for it. Yeah. And he goes, no, it was you. And then beats the shit out of him. And he's like, get out of here. I'm not going to kill you because you're my friend. But we're done here. Mm-hmm. And then the cops show up later. And the the other cop starts threatening King. And and the chief is like, or lieutenant or whatever he is. Let's call him the lieutenant. He's like, stop. Like, like knock it off. Like, cut this shit. You don't need to be super cop here. And it's basically like, yeah, we'll figure it out. See ya. Is this the same meeting where... Calvin then shows back up or no, that's later. That's at the pool hall, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pool hall later. But, uh, but so they've solved the whole mystery of who it was, but they're also like, cause he calls velvet and he's like, yeah, it was Calvin. She's like, yeah, I know. I told you. Yeah. But there's probably, I don't think he was in charge. He was probably working for somebody. Mm -hmm. He's like, whatever. Pop some champagne, champagne, take the day off. You know, you're off the case. Mm -hmm. And that's the movie. I, I was hoping at that point, I was it, really hoping that up was to that the point, end of it felt the movie. Like a, up to that point, it felt like it had been two and a half hours. It, it did. It, it had and been the kind rest of, of the movie felt like another two and a half hours. Yeah. From here, I don't even remember which things happened, but I know uh, the casino heist is one of them. Yeah. And it, that's that's the whole intercut bad. Okay, everyone gets robbed. She's taking the the lead guy back to her place to fuck him. Yeah, who I thought and, his name was Mac, but I think it's just Matt. Like it's not a cool thing. I think his name was just Matt because like, I was his listening. name was Warhawk Tanzania. <laughs> I just Warhawk like Tanzania. you know. I mean, cool looking guy like this who runs mm-hmm. a underground casino. You expect his name to be something like Mac or you know like yeah. some sort of nickname, something but, cool. But no, I'm pretty sure she was just saying Matt M A T T. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Who yeah. knows? But and in a more interesting movie, this would be like, oh, well, she brought him back, and now they ripped off my place. It is Matt. Yeah, it is Matt. Yeah. Yeah, and then it becomes, okay, how does Velvet get out of this? Because now they're all after her. And nope, it's not. They get back, they're like, oh, shit, place been robbed. What the fuck? And then from there, it is the next morning, and it's Calvin at the pool hall with all the dudes who robbed the place, basically splitting up the money. Mm -hmm. And they show up because they've tracked down Calvin, and they're just like, hey, it's time to fight again. 
and we get the bigger Donnie Brook with everybody beating the shit out of everybody. Yeah. And I think I this, was this just... is the one where the cops show up and we get that where it's super loud and they're walking yeah. in. Because yeah, well, I, could... I mean, the casino heist was as well, but this yeah, is yeah. the same thing. Yeah, same thing. But, and that one was just cut between uh, unsexy sex scenes <laughs> where it, it clearly looks like she and the dude are not kissing. They have just placed her head in front of the camera looking at him and then moving it. You know, you almost like expect her to wrap her arms around and do like the, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the rubbing your shoulders thing. Because it's it's clearly filmed. It's, you know, like all the softcore stuff where it's like, uh, I don't think you can, I, I don't think having sex on a belly button works, you know, but it, it feels yeah, like that it is. same That's thing. That's where you put the baby in. That's yeah, where it, it feels like that same thing where it's like, no, the angles for this are not correct. Like mm. it, people don't work like that. But anyway, the unsexy sex scene mixed with a heist. This one is unexciting chick kicks mixed with cops unexcitedly yeah. showing up. Yeah, unexciting chick kicks and uh, walking dicks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, they they just show up and then eventually it's just well, they, they they show up uh, in time for like Calvin to basically they get show away. up and yeah, Calvin just runs away as soon as the cop shows up and we hear like a stop. No, <sighs> yeah, you and, don't even hear that. Yeah. You just hear a shot. Yeah, because the the lieutenant's just like, hey. Knock this off. Clean this all up. You four get out of here. You're the good guys. I know it. Right. And then they come out and yeah, Calvin's been shot in the head by the partner and they're all like, uh, he's like, I warned him. I bet he didn't stop. So I shot him in the fucking head and they're all like, we didn't hear you give any sort of warning. Uh, and he's like, no, yeah, I'm a cop. I, I get to do what I want. And even the lieutenant's like, for Christ's sake. <laughs> really? And they're all like, uh-huh. So they're all suspicious of and, him. And, and they're patting uh, the de- the body down at this point. It's like, yeah, no gun. <laughs> like, yep. He's unarmed. It's like, yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they, but the, the lieutenant's just like, you two get out, you four get out of here before things, before everybody shows up and it gets worse. So once again, he's just like, just get out of here. Yeah. And then... Uh, and they go back to their they all go back home right and that's when we get a call from a mysterious caller to king it says hey i'm taking over the territory now just so you know yeah i've been fucking with your business for a reason uh-huh. i'm not going to cut you out because i like you but you got to come meet me and i'm going to take over meet mm-hmm. me on the roof of somewhere yeah and so they meet on top of a warehouse or something on a helipad and of course it's the cop who had shot calvin just moments ago mm-hmm and this is where we get, as you called it, the the uh, Keystone Cops scene. <laughs> yeah, because it's all sped up chasing around a rooftop. Well, I mean, they st- you know they have some, uh, how dare you, how dare you, why you know some Bond villain monologuing of mm-hmm. his motivations and stuff, and they fight normal for a second, but then like the second they decide to take the rest of the roof into the the fight choreography, yeah, it it drops to like twelve frames a second and is doing the Keystone Cops, Benny Hill, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. Even those are both of those ones really dated. One's kind of dated uh, mm-hmm. references. Uh, so. If you can go even more dated, it's usually better than a more okay. recently dated. All right. So like the Keystone Cuffs. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Like the silent movie era uh, uh, of action. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. It's not good. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Uh, but he, he, uh, he, he kills King. Yeah. Eventually the cop stabs King. Yeah. He, get, he, he fights he get, dirty and stuff. Yeah, he, get, he gets uh, fucked up a little bit only because of the next scene. It becomes, he gets, you know, a couple slaps to the face or something. Mm-hmm. So they have some markings on him. But he kills King. And that's a strange plot twist in this at this point. Mm-hmm. But Well, it's also, at this point, it's almost felt like King is more of a protagonist than Velvet Smooth is. Kind of? I mean. It's kind of felt like they've been dual of. protagonists. Yeah. Like, like they've had a pretty much equal screen time. Yeah. So it feels odd. And then also, now he's just dead. We should also mention, just because he's not to be about to not be in the movie anymore, uh, King's look is, uh, he's kind of got like a, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, like a DeBarge uh, mustache or beard. Yeah. It's it's like a real thin, like not good, mm-hmm. like kind of trashy looking mustache yeah. Van Dyke thing. It's um, great. But then he's got like, uh, you know, I would say like a Commodore's Lionel Richie era size fro not huge just mm-hmm. you know impressive enough and but it, then he's got like a like a top knot rat tail coming out of it it's, it's yeah. pretty bad 
Uh, and whenever he moves his head, you see it. Yeah. I mean, he kind of looks like a bomb bomb, you know, with his head like that. Yeah. I mean, like he has a fuse or something. <laughs> I guess it would just also just be a bomb, but, uh, you know. He's, he's like a limp snork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dated limp. references once again. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag a limp snork. I can't believe I pulled DeBarge out, but yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, he, if, he you know if you know, if he you know what like DeBarge is. He could be is, a DeBarge yeah. brother. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you know what DeBarge looks like, mm-hmm. it was a trashy, like, uh, you can kind of grow a mustache. Mm-hmm. Maybe give it a couple of years. Yeah. But he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. And from here, it's Velvet goes to the cops and is like, hey, I haven't heard from King, and I don't trust your partner. There's something weird about him. Like, and, and they both, and they get into a. This discussion of how, well, you know, when the lieutenant first shot a suspect, he like dropped to his knees and was, oh, my God, and held him as he died. And, you know, it was a very traumatizing experience for him, Mm -hmm. which it should be. And they're like, yeah, he kind of shot Calvin and was just like, huh, that sucked, didn't it? You shot Calvin and he was totally Coolidge with it. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, and then then I'm just going for all the data references. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I'm trying to work my tippy. I'm trying to. I'm trying to work my tippy canoe and Tyler Two mm. joke in here somewhere. Oh, good luck. All right. Uh, the she leaves, and in just one of those scenes that probably barely worked in 1976, runs into a guy who looks shockingly like Telly Savalas, but yeah. definitely isn't. Yeah. And they just do like a whole like Kojak thing where they like bump into each other, and he's well, he, like, yeah, she's like preoccupied walking and you know turn around looking at somebody he's coming out of the elevator with folders you know mm-hmm. like people do and she just bumps in and knocks all the folders down and helps them pick them up and then it's like ah mm-hmm. a man yeah. And, yeah but but i mean he i'm a real sucker he may, for as those well kind just, of he may as well just wink at the camera as he's picking the stuff up yeah. and they say like hey keep doing good work or something like i, I can't even read I don't even remember what it was because oh, I was, was just ba- like, Wait. he says baby. That was Kojak's yeah. thing. He's like, oh, that's okay, baby. And you yep. know, just smiles and sort of winks and walks off. And it's like, huh. But the guy looks so much like Telly Savalas that I was like, did they fucking talk Telly Savalas? Like, did somebody. I didn't look it up. I mean, for part yeah, of no, it, it is like, not. I mean, is yeah, not. I didn't think it would I, be. I, and I didn't either because I'm like, no, look at this. Look at this thing. Well, Telly, also- Telly Savalas would have shown up and been like, I got better shit to do today. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, and the guy was too thin, too. Like, Tully, yeah, Tully, yeah, Tully, 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 was, Tully Savalas was a hunk of a man. I mean, like... He was a slab of meat. I'm just saying, he, yeah, and I mean, like, a hunk of a man, like, yeah, in, in terms know, of, yeah, large size. He, he was, was just like a chiseled swarthy. man. Swarthy. Yeah, swarthy. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, but, but anyway, so she leaves, and is like, yeah, I still haven't heard from King. I don't know what's going on. And so the partner shows up, and the lieutenant's like, the fuck you been all morning? And also, why is you? Why the? Where'd you? How'd you get the shit beat out of you? And he's just like, ah, nothing. I'm not feeling so great. And he's like, just finish your paperwork and go home then. Yeah. And basically, just goes in his office, calls somebody. He's like, we got to meet. Go to the old warehouse or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the chief is like, oh, he's leaving immediately. Hat and yeah. follows and, him out. And also, Velvet apparently tapped his phone because she is listening in. Actually, okay, I realize now what it, what happened. Okay. Okay. No, it's just it, it, the, the, the movie <laughs> was so know. confusing that now I just pieced it together. So because it's not recorded right, she called his office and played a tape with King's voice on it. She must have pieced together something because he okay. leaves thinking King's still alive and he's going to go finish him off in the warehouse. Oh, okay. So that tape was not a tap. It was playing back. Something gotcha. from her answering machine or some All shit. All right. Yeah. Yep. Because remember, they showed her having the dumb reel-to-reel answering machine. Yep. That looked like a Betamax tape. You're right. That was in the opening credits. Yeah. So that's what it was. She, yeah, she okay. fake voiced, uh, you know, did a deep fake on King's voice. And I'll admit I had checked out by this point. But yeah. No, all, I, I, all makes sense. It only made sense just now in thinking about it. I mm-hmm. Not at the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because, yeah, he shows up. I'm like, where are you, King? Why, why aren't you? He's... He's he's dumbly monologuing that he's the bad guy to the empty warehouse that's not empty, mm-hmm. that's full of the cops and the PIs, I guess. Because he's not just like, really. Where are you, King? I, I killed you and stuff and then yeah, out pops the lieutenant with his gun. He's like or actually he doesn't come out with a gun. He, uh the mm-hmm. partner threatens to shoot him. I don't even know what this guy's name is. Yeah. I don't think he ever said his name. I didn't even bother to look it up. Yeah. But uh but yeah, he's about to shoot him and it looks like Velvet has been just hiding behind a laundry basket. Sure. She just sort along of creeps with, out of frames. Yeah, yeah a, along with her three girls, who then who she kicks the gun out of his hand. That's less impressive that this guy 
brought an entire fucking platoon to fight with him. He but snuck them in. Okay. Yeah, not just brought them. <laughs> yeah, because this whole sequence sucks. Yeah. For one, but for two, it's just baffling because yeah. he has entered this empty warehouse going, where are you, King? What's going on, King? The lieutenant follows him in. Mm-hmm. Velvet and her girls are already in there. They come out, kick the gun away, and he goes, everybody get him. And suddenly there are fucking 40 guys yeah. mm-hmm. running after the these five people who showed up in there. Mm-hmm. Which means the, the, the lieutenant or whomever had to walk through this mob or whatever and not notice mm-hmm. them. Yeah, Navigate past 40 guys yeah. somehow. It's not that big a warehouse. Yeah. But suddenly, okay, guess what? It's chicks with kicks again. And... It just doesn't. It 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 doesn't end. Yeah, basically, uh, they kick the guy. I don't know. Maybe they kill the partner guy. I don't even really care. But when it's all resolved, basically, the uh, lieutenant guy is like, "Well, back to the numbers game. It was my game all along." Freeze frame credits, and it's just like, meet the old boss, same as the new boss. Mm-hmm. Whoever directed this movie, I won't get fooled again. And watch another one. Well, well, we already I got have, fooled twice. I okay. have good news for you. All right. He only made we two. We have watched his filmography. Fuck. I mean. Yeah. yeah. I, I, how, do, how does that dude die? Um, I honestly, uh, it's only been an hour and I do not remember anymore. Something happens to him where he ceases to live. And then he is dead. Yeah, I don't know. I guess. I mean, I, seriously, I, I, there were two points in this where I sort of like intentionally tried to make myself nod off. There was one time when I knew I was safe in doing so, and that was when it was in the nightclub casino or whatever, and the lady sings the entire shitty song. Oh, that's right. I forgot that. But that one, I was like, I, when I realized what I was on for, I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be like three or four minutes. I can rest my eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I now I'm wondering if it happened during the warehouse. It's just simply because of exhaustion, just because of like how everything is just sort of happening just, and just coming chaos. out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as soon as the guys show up, I was just like, what the fuck? I mean, I was just like, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, no, you were supposed yeah. to end here. Yeah. Like somebody pulls a gun and shoots him instead, and that's how you end it. Yeah. Forget it, but Jake. No. It's the numbers game. Yeah. You had to do another Donnie Brook. Yeah. They couldn't get enough of that awful kicking. I, I will say I, one oh, it, thing I did forget to mention is from the earlier one when the, there are two things I like in the pool hall fight. Okay. There's when one of the girls grabs a cue stick and is fighting another dude with a cue stick. And there's actually some fast paced clack, 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 clack. Mm-hmm. Like, like these two people actually understood how to do this. Yeah. And as I recall, like some pretty good hits at the table as someone rolls out of the way just in time. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, that yeah, was all right. Yeah. That's all right. And also, just before the cops come in, Velvet has a guy pinned down on top of a desk and is just repeatedly karate chopping his balls. Yeah, like just <laughs> over yeah. and over. Like, like classic, you know, like GI Joe just discovered the kung fu grip style, like he ya, you yeah. know, style. Like you're trying to break the board. Yeah. Except the but board not even like, is this not even like the balls. realistic, like you know, a, a clenched fist is a little nope. better than an open hand chop. No, nope. yeah. it's just, and she's just chopping yeah. away at this guy's balls when the cops come in and tell her, "Hey, knock Quit it off the balls." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there, there's there's one almost tracking shot where the uh, the partner guy who I still don't even know his name is mm-hmm. going. I think he's going into the warehouse to confront he not is. King, but there's like it's almost like tracking him into it, which I think is like maybe part of the reason why my brain rejected the uh, the goons even more. Because I was like, we just saw this. We saw you walk we in. Saw the there whole were sequence. no guys. This is the only time you've actually set the something up other than, oh my god, she got in a taxi and she rode in the taxi and then arrived at her location. Mm-hmm. Like every other scene where there was there was just like people are now in a scene and they're talking. This is the only time you've actually like established this guy going into the building, showing us that there are not forty guys at his side, mm-hmm. and then they magically appear. You know, like yeah. Batman villains. So yeah, it wasn't Frankie. I don't know. The cop. Sergeant Barnes? Must be. I don't know. I can't I can't tell. Barnes, that might be it. I, that they might they have just been calling him Barnes from time to time. Yeah, he's Sergeant Barnes. Uh okay. the other guy was Lieutenant Ramos. Okay. So I was right, he was the lieutenant. Anyway. 
Good job. The lieutenant yeah. is now running the numbers game. Apparently, he always was. Because mm-hmm. yeah, he does say, I need to find a new guy now. King's yeah. dead. All and and, and I mean, and it is like a smash to credits. It's like he barely finishes the sentence before they're like, bam, names. Yeah. Well, they do directly say, or I think once, I think Barnes says it once, and then the Ramos or whatever guy says it. But yeah, they specifically say the king is dead, which, you know, I immediately, mm-hmm. you, you must by law, refer, you then immediately mm-hmm. reply, long live the king, mm-hmm. I, I believe. Or maybe not. Maybe that was that whole rebellion thing from before the podcast started. I don't know. I just realized don't include that. That was a pre-show conversation. It was. Anyway. Uh, we also have a Velvet Smooth song. Yeah. Not a Stargrove. No. No, not just really. Just because you're saying her name. It's all. You're not really narrating anything that's happening. It's, yeah, it's it's very generic. Like, she's got the power. I'm not that, but. but mm-hmm. generic. Um, I don't know. Not even. It's kind there's of nothing, your generic. There's like, nothing catchy about no. it whatsoever. It's generic R&B song that happens to have the name of our star in it. Doesn't Correct. get a Stargrove. Sorry. It does not. Uh, let's rate this bitch. It does get a rating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two bags. It's not the worst thing I've seen, but it was terminally boring. It felt like three times as long as it was. Um, if there was ever a good version of this movie, like a, a nice looking version of this movie, uh, we don't got it. No, this one looked bad. Apparently, there's a riff tracks for it. I don't know if they released a, if it's just audio or if there's actually a video version of it with a different I, I cut know. or whatever. But I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it was hard to what watch. What we watched was not great. And the yawning in my voice uh, speaks to this movie. I think. Yeah. Warburton, Tanzania. Warhawk, Tanzania. Oh. I just... Uh, <laughs> Tanzania. Uh, Rave Sam. Uh, I, okay, I guess so. Um, three bags. There was ladies, three ladies, three bags. I don't know. It's not good. <laughs> it's bad. I, I honestly I'm, thought both of you were going to be more harsh on it. I mean, I was real close to a four, but like... I don't know. It's just... I'm thinking about some of the other like four and fives that I've seen. And this one just, I think BJ kind of hit it on the head. It didn't, at the end of the day, it didn't make me angry. Like a four or five usually does. Yeah. It's just fucking boring and badly made. You know, I mean, I just, I just got that. I was getting serious. Uh, I don't know why, like I, there has been so many periods of, of bad cinema, you know, we're just like, certain genres where movies were just so bad but man there was there was an early 2000 to 2010 era where it's just like shot on commercial camcorders with these like you know softcore porn actor people and stuff and they were just bad. i mean it wasn't like they were like there for nudity and stuff it was like we're making a low budget creature flick and it's a bunch of people that have no idea to act and it was like i thought things like that were bad and i'm like i guess this this kind of shit's existed forever just a, a cast of nothing, it but just, people have no idea how to act or do anything. It just takes different forms over yeah, the decades. Yeah. Uh, the fight choreography was done by like Owen Watt son. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, Watt wow. dash, dash son. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. I don't know if that was supposed to be. Like, I'm sure that's a ha ha ha. Joke, it's like, Oriental ish. Yeah, I don't know. Or, um, or maybe he's from Watts. I don't know, but it's only one T. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Either way. E- either way, like. No, no thanks. No way. I don't like it, Owen. Oh. I have to agree with three bags. It's it's rare when I'm watching a movie to go, oh no, not another fight scene. <laughs> but this movie made me go, oh no, not another fight scene. And I just, I, you know my thing about all movies need to be shorter. And this movie is only 92 minutes and it feels like God. two and a half hours. Yeah. I can't believe it's only 92 minutes. It felt like two hours. Believe it, least. sister. 92 minutes. And we even cut the credits short because we were like, okay, the song is not Stargrove. We're not listening to the rest of it. Right. Yeah. So we missed the part where Nick Fury shows up and recruits her to the shitty Avengers. <laughs> the Shavengers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
There's actually just a velvet painting at the end mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Nick yeah, Fury. And I, I wish I could go into the whole, like, oh, it's so bad, I'm enjoying this, but it just, we we just weren't able to mine any jokes out of watching it It doesn't at have all. that... It, it doesn't have that charm. No, and it... I mean, it's just more boring than anything. That's because I mean, it's, it's sad. That's the thing is like this whole movie is is acted and done in a way of just lethargy. It's like you know, you're, generally when you're like, oh god, it's so bad, it's good. It's because somebody is trying, mm-hmm. and nothing about this movie at any point feels like it's trying. Well, just like the wallet guy we yeah. mentioned in the beginning, yeah. where it's suddenly somebody shows up who's animated and like into what this, they're doing. Just to be fair, this is like such a nothing character. But if you oh, see yeah. the movie, you will know exactly what we're talking about because it's just like suddenly a guy is like. Uh, you know, like, uh-huh. yeah, just doing acting things and being animated, and you're like, oh shit, that's what that is like. I forgot. Uh, yeah. yeah, somebody who's actually going for it and yeah. not like over the top yeah. either. He's just like, feels like a real guy. He's like, man, my fucking wallet, man. Yeah. I mean, that's why people. I mean, I, I look, I still don't get it, but that's why I get it. I do get it. I just don't personally feel the same way. No. It's why people have their thing about Nicolas Cage because Nicolas Cage has always turned to at least a nine, if not an eleven. You know, like almost mm-hmm. any movie. You know, and the ones where he's not, it's like those are the ones where people are like, oh, you know, like, you yeah, know, so you I'm just saying, just at least he's going to bring the energy if like, if nothing else, even if it's mm-hmm. an energy I don't want to consume most of the time. Yeah. So it's, but I get it. Like there, there's an energy there and, and an energy in some of these bad people. Like Tommy Wiseau is like, is a whatever the hell he is, but at least it is a strange enough personality that it is a personality. Yeah. You know, there's something, it's being, something interesting yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. There's something that goes on there's like there's a train wreck part of the you know part of the movie or i lost my train of thought um it, prob- it, did it wreck yeah it wrecked <laughs> okay. exactly um but there's at least something that stands out or there's something that's like so poorly done that it's worth noting mm-hmm. and this is just like that's bad but it's not like Good, bad. It's mm-hmm. bad, bad. Yeah, yeah. This is Hasn't more. Stay I mean, away. I mean, stay away. I mean, exactly. we didn't even mention it, but like one of the fight scenes, just just because if we're talking about the technical f- aspects of the feature, one of the fight scenes is like clearly shot with. It's shot in like Central Park or some other park that's in New York, um, and they just went out there with like a single par light or whatever, you know, like one light on a stand, mm-hmm. and the whole thing is just yeah. shot from like one spotlight and. A lot of it is like they they put the main actress in like a yellow a, shirt, yeah, or like lime green or some shit, just something so it was like, oh, you can tell her out of this poorly lit scene, but also like mm-hmm. even when she sort of steps out of the the spotlight, you still kind of at least see her form happening, you know. But yeah, I mean, it's, that's just saying that's the kind of level we're dealing with of like, how can you make fun of that? It's just like it's so, I don't know, it, it, you know, it's like it, I don't know, that'd be, that'd be like a art critic coming and like making fun of a kindergartner's you know finger painting it's just like dude yeah the kid's trying bother. yeah the kid's trying <laughs> these kids try yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well we don't have any voicemails this week right uh we have an email we have an email so i hear we have a voice uh, fucking idiot <laughs> um so i hear we have an email this week mackie Hang on, someone just hacked my Battle.net account. A fucking gen. Sorry. Just give me two seconds here. So I hear someone hacked your no. fucking Battle.net account. <laughs> yeah. I blame El Diablo. Come on, man. This isn't the time. We have to finish talking about this black thorn in our side. No, it's, it's like the third <laughs> time this has happened. I'm fucking sick of it. Now. I, I, I'm fucking with you. I just want to make Blizzard jokes. Yeah. They don't have that many games to mine from. I know. It's just, it's just very fucking obnoxious. All right, let me find the damn email. Holy shit, we got a lot of emails. Sadly, not many of them are correspondence. Right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 
You want to throw that to me again? So, Mackie, I hear we have an email. We do. Let's discuss that instead of Velvet, uh, whatever it was. The Velvet Underground movie that we watched. Right. Yeah. Yes. This one's from Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Jeff's email is titled Scott Adkins. You may have heard of him. Oh, yes. Scatkins, as we call him. Uh, I think I asked for this, perhaps. You did. Okay. Jeff said, Avengement is probably his best movie, and he has plenty of charisma in it. He plays the straight arrow younger brother of a local crime lord who goes to prison for crimes the brother committed. In prison, he is constantly attacked and learns to defend himself. And when he gets out, he goes after his brother. It's brutal, bloody, and awesome. He is also the star of the Undisputed series, which has lots of good fighting. He has a good fight against Donnie Yen in Ip Man 3, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Harlow, you and Chuck watched him in Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning, which is a really, really weird entry in the franchise, but there it is. Mid-movie fight in the sporting goods store that rocks. And he will be in John Wick 4. Brash and burn. Sent from my iPhone. Jeff. It was it was Ip Man 4, yeah, which I did Ip, mention in my Ip Man things Ford. I've seen Scott Atkins in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I said it was a good role for him because he plays a racist, unlikable drill instructor kind of guy. Because that's so far, that's the vibe I'm getting that he works better as a villain. And right. I'm just saying, I, right. show me a movie where he's a good hero and I might get on board the Atkins diet. Uh, apparently that one. Uh, this, uh, Revengement? Revengement? Avengement? Avengement, I think it was. You waited until I clicked off oh. of the email to ask me that question. I can look it up. I, Both I, of us did. Avengement. That's Avengement. Avengement. Okay. Avengement. That's my least favorite flavor of <laughs> of mint yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like strategy chocolate yeah yeah gamer grub <laughs> turn-based <laughs> ranch god that's a deep deep cut that's, jesus yeah that's that's a 12 years ago cut mm -hmm. uh anyway anyway thanks jeff thanks jeff we appreciate you uh if you would also like to send us an email about scott adkins or anything else Email us bmf at bmfcast.com, or if you want to leave us a message on the Garfield phone, the Bamfcast hotline, 9105 Jocks BMF or 910 556 9263. That is our voicemail line. You can leave a little message. Uh, if you just want to explore the podcast and related things, uh, bmfcast.com. And if you want to help support what we do here and keep the, uh, keep the bad goodness flowing or the good badness flowing, uh, patreon.com slash bmfcast that is where and how we make money to keep the show going it pays for you know all the shit you need to do a podcast like liquor mm -hmm. handcuffs and our scott atkins diet almonds all those things yeah. yeah all our velvet paintings of smooth things yes yeah. all right so uh yeah we'll continue black exploitation history month Next week. Next week. With something else. We will. Indeed. Let's get out of here. Let's. I'm Harlow. I'm Mackie. I'm BJ. And this is Banff Cast Out. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Cheese bags. Bags of cheese. Yes. Bags of cheese. Mackie, do you have Illustrator on that? I do. Okay. What do you need? Make I just me need a logo to... and make it pop. Yeah, exactly. I'll need a little more information <laughs> than that. I need you to make that uh, make that logo just a little bit bigger. I can do that. No. Um, I just want to look at what Illustrator looks like these days because I haven't seen it in 12 years. Doesn't really? It pretty okay. much just look like Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, I, somewhat, I, I mean, until you pull up toolbars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me... Uh... W Illustrator 2023. Uh, it's a different thing. I see that. There. I see that. Looks like a weird R thing. R. Okay. I don't know. What's my recent shit? Look at all these recent icons I've made. How about that? So it's just a case quantity it's, one. So I, I liked my joke. I don't know if anyone caught it. Or if it was just bad enough that nobody acknowledged it. That the fight choreography was done by Bruce's brother, Bad. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of extra things open. Okay, like, what are you looking it for? It is the same here? as I last saw it, so I don't need to... For the most part. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got layers, shit like that. Yep. Still. Like an onion? Yeah. Yes. Or an ogre? And like Photoshop.
Okay. Or perfect. Yeah, I mean, there are some new tools if you if they let you have a copy. I, if they I'm give assuming you a license, that I'm would, assuming that I'm going to have a copy. Yeah, there is a uh, there is when you first get into it, there's a pop up that has what's new, which is does have some very cool features. Like if you have something with intersecting paths, like say you had drawn uh, an infinity symbol, mm -hmm. and you wanted the one path to cross under the other. You can actually do that. There's a tool that'll let you select that joint and then gotcha. give you kind of like that interweaving because mm -hmm. uh, when you need to make like a chain, set, right, right. you would need to use that tool to to uh, set. Isn't that a priority. Mobius loop though? Yes. Because I mean, an infinity loop goes just a sideways eight, right? I mean, yes. the difference. But I'm talking, talking about like where the intersection loop. is, if it'll separate it. Right, but that makes know. it a Mobius strip, right? No. No, Mobius strip has to have the twist in it. Mobius strip is a, a right two D circle with a twist. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you have uh, multiple things, like say a logo with a ribbon, you know, let's just throw a generic. Oh, you won a prize, and right. you got a banner. Like if you wanted something to be in front of that banner, but behind something else, you know, like that, you can. There's a tool that'll let you do that stuff very easily now. Nice. Nice. So they, I mean, they've done some pretty sweet AI yeah. stuff. I assume if I'm going to be dealing with it, it's mostly going to be, hey, can we sp spelled this wrong? Can you correct that real quick and send another proof? If I have to do anything at all, you would. I would hope you're doing that in in uh, InDesign, but InDesign, yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, InDesign's a whole other beast. Yeah. Most people hate InDesign. Fuck, I forgot about InDesign. Yeah, InDesign's the best. I love InDesign. That's why I'm weird, and that's why they pay me a lot of money to do my shit. Yeah. Because I'm the only. That's one the one that like, I have. Built. InDesign, yeah. love it. It's awesome. Oh man, maybe I can find my path to becoming a video editor because I like using Sony Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, I mean Sony bought it. I liked it long before yeah. it was Sony's yeah. product. Mm -hmm. But no, that was always my favorite. Because Vegas was one of the first ones that had uh, real-time previews. Like, you didn't have to render things to see what a oh, transition nice. was going to look like. Nice. I That's I opened thing. up my copy of... Well, I reinstalled my copy of Sony Vegas the other day. 14. And I was like, ah, cool. It's still so much... There's so much on the screen. I don't know what to do right now. I'm going to come back to this later when I have more brains. Yeah, I, I I really cared for Premiere. I mean, and, and that, that somehow became the de facto standard. I just it's just because it's Adobe. Yeah, it's because it's Adobe, and it's part of Creative Cloud now. Yeah, I, and, I, and Final Cuts become such a thing. It's I like need to there's not it. much. I mean, I know real film editors are gonna be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" But like, I swear to God, there's so little difference between iMovie and Final Cut these days. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it just feels like you're working on the same fucking thing with a couple more things. I don't know. I. I have used Audition somewhat recently, and also um, uh, Reaper. And Reaper. Yeah. What is Reaper? I don't even know. Reaper that. is a sound editor. Is it? From, yeah. From Adobe? No. Oh, no, it's from somebody else. Okay, um, also, um, Audacity and like Man, Audacity is. Audacity. They changed know. their. They changed the policy on that, like data collection. Oh, shit. really? Yeah. They changed it real quick. Hmm. Yeah, because they knew. Yeah. I haven't touched Audacity in so long. I can't. I wouldn't feel comfortable we saying anything done, bad about it. We haven't done a live it, stream in a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying I haven't done yeah. that in so long. I I would. I I hate used to hate Audacity compared to like Audition, but I'm saying it's probably changed so much in the many years since I've touched it. Yeah, it's just it's fine. It took me like an hour to get used to using it again, and I was like, oh yeah, this this, this actually works pretty well. Yeah, like I said, I think it's just it's whatever. Whatever you probably like learned your way fumbling through figuring out how to do yeah. something the first time is what you're comfortable with. Because, like, I mean, Cool Edit Pro, yeah, baby. Cool Edit Pro man. back in the day, man. It's, which God, is what cool Premiere is now, essentially, or yeah. Audition is yeah. now. Yeah, Cool Edit Pro. They've, they've, yeah, I know they've Adobe'd it up. Yeah. Some, but. It used to look cool in Audition. I swear to God, cool. Audition 3 was just Cool Edit Pro 2.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear, it was like they barely they just all I did was like slap an Adobe logo on it when it first switched over. I will, uh, because I don't think anybody can come after me at this point, I will admit to having pirated the shit out of Cool Edit uh, Pro and Cool Edit Pro 2.0. Mm -hmm. That's all I used back in the day. 
was a fucking cracked copy that I got from some weird website. I did entirely too many things in what was it? Was it Paint Shop Pro? Not Print Shop. Not the like. Yeah, make, yeah. yeah, that was the cheap, not free mm-hmm. editor. Or Corel Draw. Yeah, well, Corel Draw was expensive as fuck back yeah. in the day. Fuck Corel Draw. I'm saying like Paint Shop Pro is like you could actually go buy it for like forty bucks or something. Yeah, like you yeah. could get Corel from the store for Couldn't like two hundred bucks. Oh, I was mean, two hundred. Yeah, bucks? it was like right. it was, I'm saying it was like same price as like Paint Shop or Photoshop back in the day. I remember seeing it. Maybe it's just I only saw it on sale. I'm sh- yeah, I mean, I'm sure but years later when Paint Shop had wiped the floor with them, they were probably mm-hmm. giving it away. But back when, when, when I think of Corel Draw, I mean that was yeah. like a full professional yeah. price thing. Yeah. Paint Shop was like, this is pretty good, and it didn't cost very much mm-hmm. or free. Yeah, I told you how LG has been throwing uh, ultra short throw projector emails at me. Yeah, like hey. What did you search while you were logged in? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> well, that one is. I mean, I've I've actually that learned one is it, it, expensive. I've actually learned yeah. anytime I'm researching something, I literally don't know what I'm doing. I hit private tabs every fucking time. I now. need to start every doing time. That. I'm like, I literally don't know. Like, I'm just googling something for the first time, just because I've I'm, I literally don't know what I'm searching for. I'm like, just put that on a private tab because I don't want that in my search history. Because, I mean, I hear terms like. Well, I, I dropped one on you, I think, last time I heard on the, the Harley Quinn cur- animated thing. <laughs> that also apparently showed up on a, a Rick and Morty. Which but, one was it? Uh, I, whatever, Cum Gutters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cum I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know what that means, and I'm definitely private tabbing that one. Amazon says they have it in stock. Yeah, is it less than that price that I saw? Because, Jesus. Uh, it is $200 less. Well, that hurts me and this like, and this is the on white one. Of your what are you looking account? at? Like, how much is this thing? What is it? Uh, this one, buy new, four thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars and seventeen cents. I mean, that is the white one. The black one is five hundred dollars more. Okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I. I <clears throat> but <clears throat> yeah, I and just, it's only four K. It's I not got even eight no K. That money, <laughs> that huh? money is insane. It's only four K. It's not even eight K. Why would you need eight K? That's silly. Uh, because I'm future proofing the shit out of this thing. If I'm paying five grand for it. My voice, something's going on right now. Yeah. And I don't know. What I it mean, is. it. It. I. I. I don't want to be that guy that you go back on record, but it will be ten years before we I see know. any 8K content. That's like. Yeah, I know. Anything more than like YouTube videos, like it is right now, or you know, high end, super high end PC gaming yeah. or something. Yeah, so it's actually a DLP. That's interesting as well. Hmm. Oh, weird. It's not a laser. I thought they were all lasers. Or... They are laser, but it says it's DLP. Three channel laser smart homer theater Cinebeam projector. Oh, don't buy that one. It's up to thirty seven hundred ANSI lumens. Homer theater. Homer theater. <laughs> My name's Homer theater. Welcome to the movies. I I do I do want to see what the actual size of this is, like the box itself. Yeah, and apparently they all they all do have most of them have speakers in them because they just figured the they box do. was going to be that big. Yeah, might as well put a center channel speaker in it. Yep. I mean, it's 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 just impressive that you can have. I mean, I know five grand or whatever is still a lot, but it's like if you think about it's a box you can put seven inches away from wherever you want it to project, and it can make a hundred and twenty inch screen. That's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, I, like I'm just it, saying, if you were to do the cost eighty inches, is only yeah. at like two two inches from the wall. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, is you get eighty inch, and then you you put seven inches, and it's one hundred twenty. Yeah, one hundred twenty. Yeah, I just I mean, if you look at like what an 85 inch TV 4k TV would cost and mm-hmm. you know, think about how much more it'd be to go. What is that? 30 or I can do math. 35 more inches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Once you, it. once you've got a, a above the eight, once you're in the 85 range, it's like just buy the short throw, Yeah. but then you got to buy. Well, the, the, I mean, the, they make um, a, they make a hundred something inch screen one, but it's mm-hmm. insanely expensive. And you still have a control box. I mean, that's the crazy thing. It's like, you know, a thing that big, it's like it's it has to be that big and that thin that they can't even put the brains inside of it. It's got to have a separate box thing out of it because it just it would weigh so fucking much if you put the brains in it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, TVs are expensive. Yeah. Well, uh, the these TVs are expensive. The other TVs, not so much. Person, now I saw that they're. I think CS this year they showed. Now they have ones that you can wall mount them, and other than power, because there's no way to wirelessly do power yet. But like the control boxes wirelessly talking to the TV. 
like nice. all the all the I don't know what kind of mm-hmm. protocol it's using, but yeah. it can do full 4K 120 or whatever, like wirelessly between the brains and the, which is neat because that means you can put that like in the back with all your consoles or in a closet or whatever and hide it and just have yeah. your TV on the wall. Mm-hmm. I wonder yeah. what that does for latency for video games. Apparently, that's the, the all the things they were considering is like they've got some sort of proprietary protocol that's like mm-hmm. lightning fast yeah. between it. And, not on a band of other things that's going to get interference or whatever. Yeah, I, I I remember seeing the ones with the with the separate brain. It's interesting. But yeah. Man, eighty five inch Bravia, two grand. It's not bad for yeah. And the ones I was looking at, the LG OLEDs were like it's probably four grand. Four, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think I'd go to this. I'd go back to Samsung, as much as I'd like to. Well, I mean, in uh, if you're going OLED, you want to go LG or Sony. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like Samsung doesn't even have it. Yeah, I, I don't think that. Yeah, they don't support OLED for some reason. No. That's like they may OLED not. is like their baby, yeah. I think, and they were like, "We're gonna back this." <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, I think they're and the ones that came up with QLED. So, and it's just not as good. No, it's the, not. the black isn't as good on it. So. No, because I mean, it's still a QLED is still type of technically an LED TV. It's just it's got. A panels. whole bunch of backlights, yeah, yeah. Like on like you know three three or four sections, it's got eighty or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just I I have gone down that road and don't want to go back down it again. Yeah, I noticed. It. I mean, the TV in my room is it's a it's a four K, but it's a, you know it was a Amazon Prime Day special cheap El, El cheapo mm-hmm. one, but it's like it's a nice TV, but it's still it's an LED, and it's like yeah, like when the when it's an all black screen and Netflix logo go, comes up, and it's like there's that wonderful. Superman glow behind it. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's just like the. Oh, I, yeah. I was just saying, I mean, like the Superman credits. You know, like. You know. Yeah, yeah. My parents' TV was yeah. like that. It, I did not want to watch anything on it. Yeah. Especially House of the Dragon looked like shit. Yeah, I will say, like, oh, the, I the crazy like thing is, every TV almost. The crazy thing is, I maybe it's just because it's different. Full color stuff almost looks better on that TV than my OLED. I know that sounds weird, but like, but when it goes black, it's me like, no, no fucking question. I'm saying mm-hmm. like, the second it goes dark, but when it gets full motion light, it almost like looks brighter and newer. Yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. And I feel about. like it, I, mean, I feel like it has some sort of. I've got all the motion smoothing things turned off, but I feel like it's got something that you can't turn off on it because, especially when you're watching app based things mm-hmm. like YouTube or Netflix, not. I've I've noticed some commercials on the Apple TV on certain stations will. I'm convinced they turn smoothing on somehow. Like in the broadcast? And you can, yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, I've seen some that have that, like in the broadcast, it's weird. There's like a Fancy Feast commercial of all things where I'm like, no, they did some kind of weird smoothing on this that does not look right. But there's also stuff where I could have sworn I had shut off every single smoothing option, and there's some commercials that just come through smoothed that I know I've seen unsmoothed. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. Like I, I, I just don't understand why... TV manufacturers insist on forcing that in like any possible way they can. Yeah. I don't get it. Well, I, it I, I mean, look, sports look looks good. better. Sports is the only reason. Sports is yeah. the only time to use it. The only time. Yeah. But they find a way to like have it like hidden in every other fucking setting and they keep changing what it's called. I mean, I would say I think it's so good on sports. Though. I think yeah, anything so that's good. like supposed to be realistic. I mean, I would say like nature documentaries would be fine on too. Because, I mean, just anything like where your eye is like, I want to be seeing the real thing. Like Mm -hmm. if you're watching a concert, sports, whatever, I'm sure your eye is just like, yeah, or even an award show or whatever. But the news, you know, doesn't matter. I mean, maybe even your news might be like, you've trained your brain to that. But yeah, but I'm saying like, you know, anything else, anything else, it's like, no, absolutely not. But but again, I think we're just broken. I mean, unfortunately, that's the way things are going to go. But I mean, you've got to do it for real. Like you've got to shoot things really in 60 frames like. Yeah. And our brains are just going to have to learn to live with it. That that's the way things look now. I've gotten used to it on video games for sure. Video games I'm I prefer 60 now, but still like TV content and other things like I I had to watch The Matrix in smooth at the whatever the new one was and my I my brain still hasn't recovered from oh, I know, that. Yeah. It looks so fucking shitty but i couldn't like it was my in-laws tv and i couldn't be like can we just stop this and turn off all your settings please <laughs> yeah because i I'm... desperately wanted to but i was like no let's i'm just gonna keep my fucking mouth shut i've done that i mean i would do that at my own family's house for sure but i i i've sat through a movie at someone else's house that they had that all on and i was like 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I watched the first Jack Reacher like that. Mm. Which, that's a real dark movie, so it looks even more worse. Like, a lot yeah. of it happens at night. So I feel like night scenes look even worse when they have the yeah. motions moving on. Well, and it's weird because I can, I can deal with it. Like, I can be like, okay, this looks like shit, but I can watch it. But there was something about The Hobbit in 48 that, did, like, my brain rejected every fiber of it. Because it would feel like someone would be walking across screen, and they'd go really fast, and then they'd slow down, and then, like, they'd get to the edge of screen, and they'd try and, like, catch up almost. So the motion felt like it was like this herky jerky thing. Weird. Where it would be like slow at first and then speed up and then go slow again. Yeah. Like it. I mean, it also probably had to do a lot with like the fact that they're shooting that shit forced perspective and all kinds of weird things and then also trying to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the frames. that's the only time I've ever tried the forty eight frame thing and I, it was just like it, and it never like my brain never adjusted to it and was like okay let, this no, is I, fine. I agree. I, I I wanted not that I want to see the movie because I don't give a shit about the content, but like. I wanted to see that Ang Lee movie, that halftime movie or whatever he shot in high frame rate. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But yeah. like, I, that's the thing is like, I don't know, like, even if I wanted to watch the 48 frame Hobbit. I, yeah, I, I still haven't I gone back well, to I don't watch know, I don't know where, how, how can Hobbit. you, where can you? I'm saying like, no, there, there's anymore. no, yeah, it's like if it's not a theater, I don't, even though my TV's capable of high frame rates, I don't think it's available. Any of those no. films are available no, in that format not. anywhere, so. I, I think I think the Blu-ray is just I would assume a standard twenty-four. I, I would think so. Yeah. I haven't bothered to watch it. Yeah, because I, I, I if I'm going to watch any of them, I'm probably going to watch the second half of Smog and the beginning of the then the opening scenes of the third one, which is all the Smog stuff, and then be like, okay, I'm I, good. I never watched past the first one, even though I own all the extended editions. I should probably In, now this, that this, the time that I'm spending all these watching all these super long things, I should probably make it through the, the second. It, this the second and third one are. They're just they're lesser Lord of the Rings movies. They're just like, hey, you needed a big battle, right? So here's your big battle, but just with characters you care way less about. Mm. You know, yeah. But I want to say the that elf that's supposed to be, or not the elf, the wizard that's like kind of like the Tom Bombadil stand-in or whatever in the first one, Radagast. I'm pretty sure he does not come back. Okay. For what that's worth, because he's kind of by far the worst part of that first movie. I just remember it all being bad. I was just like the... Yeah, there is that scene where they're tossing all the plates and shit and singing yeah. a song, and it's like, man, I'm not this into Lord of the Rings. Well, I, I, I mean, I think it's just tonally it's so fucking weird, because, I mean, I don't know, like, Gimli is jokey, but he's also very solemn. And, like, you know, these are, like, Snow White dwarfs all of a sudden. Yeah. And it's like... What well, the that's hell? the thing. They get all serious by the second and third movie. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. The, that, yeah the, those than, movies than, are... Is it Lee Pace? Is he the guy that plays the main... Is he the main elf? Or, is that, or am I thinking... Yeah, of he's the main elf. Yeah. I mean, he's like serious all the time. But yes. otherwise, I don't know. He's one of those guys like, has he ever done SNL? He should. As he, uh, just random... Uh, recommendation go watch The Fall if you never have a movie called The Fall with Lee Pace okay it's a really good movie oh, okay. now the um the guy it's it's uh that Tarsim Singh the guy who made the cell that oh, yeah. movie that looked really cool but wasn't cool it uh, was bad yeah but visually it looks really good and this is like a movie that looks like that but is good <laughs> okay yeah so I'm just saying like if that sells you the guy has like his other movies are pretty interesting, and the cell's just not a good movie. Wow, two thousand six. It, yeah, it's also in the height of like you know J Lo being completely full of herself at that point. Uh, what the cell or this one? The cell. I'm saying yeah. like you know this is like ensuring her ass time. And yeah, stuff. that was when I was like, oh man, I guess like the out of sight was a fluke. Yeah, I I definitely made that decision after seeing that one. But the fall will probably make you think differently. It's a good movie. So what has Tarsim made? <sighs> Self slash less mirror mirror. Yeah, I holy forgot, shit! I forgot he did that. That's a weird holy ass fucking shit. Movie. Uh, some I, did he do the was um was he the one that did the perfume movie or is that somebody uh, else? No, that was no. somebody else. Uh, okay, I don't know. 
I feel like I, I feel like I've seen at least. Oh, one. I didn't know he did in Vogue. Hold on, before he did Losing My Religion. But yeah, The Cell and then uh, The Fall, and, and then a, a previous Immortals, mm. 2011, and then Mirror Mirror. Which wow. Yeah, I remember I watched Mirror Mirror, not knowing it was his movie, and when I like when I saw his name in the directing credits, I I I kind of buckled my seatbelt at that point because I was like, oh, this movie's not gonna be what I think it is, and that that movie's wild. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird movie. A dying real estate mogul transfers his consciousness into a healthy young body, but soon finds that neither the procedure nor the company that performed it are quite what they seem. Is this oh, the fall? Selfless. Oh, selfless. This, this says Ryan Reynolds. Actually, I think I did see that. And uh, Ben Kingsley. Ah. And a bunch of other people I'm not going to get into. but Yeah, I, I do not remember that movie in any capacity. Ryan Reynolds has made a lot of movies. Yeah, like like really way has. like way more than you would think he has because like there's so many that like were not that nobody gave a shit about yeah just like not necessarily dr- straight to video but like pretty close I just I mean I don't oh was, I watched the all that Welcome to Wrexham and I was like they were referencing a couple of movies I was like I didn't fucking know he's in this <laughs> mm-hmm. that seems to be kind of I mean it's good that he's like willing to show up in just random shit. If he knows being him being in it, will get it made. Yeah. I, like I, I appreciate anybody who does that because I feel like that was Bill Murray for a while there. Which is like, this will get made if I'm in it. But then it was like, uh, I don't know yeah, if that I mean, was why he did it. Would we have would we have the Wes Anderson career now without Bill Murray? I don't know. Um, I mean, probably not. What it I is. still think so. I mean, Rushmore obviously having him in it made made the difference with getting it distributed and everything. But I mean, look at the cast that he put in Royal Tenenbaums right after that. And I don't know if that's just cause they're like, Oh, Bill Murray, you brought him back. Even though he was, it had only been like, well, no, I mean, five I, years. I, I mean, I think at that point, like I'm saying Rushmore, Bill Murray's presence in Rushmore made it more visible and mm-hmm. therefore people saw it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Bottle Rocket. It's just nobody saw it. And yeah. it's like, you know, Rushmore. I mean, Rushmore is a better movie too, but I mean, <laughs> a lot better. I mean, I'm saying movie. it's not. It's a, you know, yeah. it's yeah, Rush, Bottle, do Rock, not, Bottle Rocket is like a good I movie. don't like Bottle Rocket. Oh. Well, Bottle Rocket is a movie that could get somebody discovered and made um, another movie like Rushmore, mm-hmm. but they might have made a second movie and also never gotten seen. I'm saying like Bill Murray made it visible, and then by the third one, people are like, "We want to work with that guy who made that movie." Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't know. I I feel like his style shown through enough that even if it hadn't had Bill Murray, I think it would have happened. It wouldn't have happened in the same way, obviously, but yeah. I still feel like it would have happened. Yeah. I mean, because it also helped that he was like best buzz with Owen Wilson who kind of blew up and was everywhere. True. So he was always going to have Owen Wilson showing up in his stuff. Yeah. Well, not just buddies. I mean, Owen Wilson co-wrote. Yeah. Ball rocket. So yeah. Yeah. But I mean, they're yeah. like, not just coworkers. Yeah. I, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It's like they were good friends. So toit. Yeah, I man, Owen Wilson's sphere of influence has got to be weird. Like, how do you become friends with like Wes Anderson and Spike Jones before they become like Oscar-winning directors? <laughs> like, that's just weird. You hang out in California. I, I guess, yeah, it's just their, your circle of people, I suppose. But like, both of those people was just like you know, became huge directors. Was was that Owen Wilson skateboard thing? Was that before he got famous? I uh, I would say he was like mildly famous, like um. Okay. God, what was the what what, what, what the skateboard thing? Yeah, there's a there's a really good Texas switch. Yeah, uh, that's like a skateboard video. It's part of a skateboard video, and Owen Wilson is being a skateboard dude. Yeah, and he's, he's just hanging out with like several skateboard people, and they're like, he's just talking shit about how they skated and everything. And they're like, well, why don't you do a flip down these stairs or whatever, grind off this or something? Yeah, he's like, he's, oh, like, right. he's like, he like he looks like he goes over and like takes off a shirt, but it's and it's actually like one of the other skaters. It's a mm-hmm. Texas switch where he comes in and does yeah. it, and then. One comes in and he's like, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's done really well. And this is like from the mid nineties type thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was one of those like I don't think I don't think Spike Jones directed that one. He might have done segments of it, but Spike yeah. Jones did a lot of those like early skate skate things and yeah. when he was doing music videos and shit. What has Spike Jones done lately? I was Your about to mother. Uh, Got him. See her, and then what? 
was after her. God, Spike Jones looks like Wes Anderson. That's really creepy. What? Who what? Like to me, he looks like Wes Anderson. The... That's Spike Jones. Yeah. That's just weird. Let me see. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I was like, yeah, he never looks like I expect him to look. I always expect him to look like a cool dude, but oh. he's. I mean, I've seen... oh, he directed Beastie Boys story. A nerd. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, uh, he's been doing like he did. He's just been going back to doing some weird shit. Aziz Ansari stand up. Uh, yeah. Well, I think a bigger question: What the hell has Charlie Kaufman done lately? Yeah. He did a, yeah, like music videos. He he seems to be doing stuff with Late Show with Stephen Colbert, but he honestly like. Yeah, he hasn't done a feature film since, since her. her. Okay, all right. Unless I mean, unless you count Beastie Boys' story, which I really don't. No, that's just like them that's standing a, on a stage and he. Yeah, I mean, it's it. no different than like filming a, a stand-up special. Really, I mean, yeah. there's a couple more camera switches because they do some uh, backstage, like running off from backstage kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> but so, Charlie Kaufman, uh, he recently did. I'm thinking of ending things. was not well received. Well, I'm the guy that never liked adaptation, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did Anna Lisa. So he's been working. Okay. Schnectady, New York. Mm. But that was like 15 years ago now. That was uh, that was Michelle Gondry, right? I never watched that one. I think that's what Schnectady. I think that is. No, that was. Isn't it uh, Schnectady? Is that it? No, he he directed it. Oh, Charlie Kaufman did. Yep. Oh, okay. Or maybe it said Synodaki. Synodoch. I thought it was Synod. Synod- now you got me, bro, kids. S Y N E C D. Synecdoche. I thought that's how you said it. Synecdoche. Synecdoche, New York. Synecdoche. Like Poughkeepsie. Schenectady. Poughkeepsie is my favorite. Uh, apparently, he's adapting Slaughterhouse Five. Mm. Okay. Right now. All right. Who else? You said Michelle Gondry. Let's see what Michelle is. I don't to. think he's done shit since like Be Kind of Rewind. Uh. Well, didn't was that before or after uh, Eternal Sunshine? Eternal Sunshine that was after, for sure. <laughs> he does make me want to watch all those old Bjork videos. Uh, know, a I... dozen eggs. Okay. It's an animation. Hmm. It's a short. God all damn right. it! Listed as a short. There now it just popped in as short. Uh, TV series called Kidding. Chemical Brothers music video. Uh, a lot of shorts. Okay. So you just kind of went back into that, like, whatever. <sighs> yeah. That's uh, Microbe and Gasoline in 2015. I don't even know what this is. Two young friends embark on a road trip across France in a vehicle they built themselves. Audrey Tattoo is in it. Okay. I would watch that. <laughs> Literally, she's... She and one other person have IMDb profile pictures. So awesome. That should tell you a lot. I, I'm assuming this is a French language film. Hey, Audrey's only a month older than me. How about that? Whew. Yeah, he just man, these people with actual talent just kinda like were like, eh, not worth it. I guess, yeah. Or maybe they feel their their time is already gone. I don't know. It's very strange. Well, Sean, Sean Country was weird. I mean, I'm just saying, like, incredibly prolific film director or music video director. Mm-hmm. I think Eternal Sunshine is amazing. You know, just a masterpiece of filmmaking. Yeah. And then Be Kind of Rewind was just like, why did you do this? Is what, how I felt like. Yeah. Like, there's just nothing like... Like Eternal Sunshine is like a you know a movie making mar- marvel, mm-hmm. and that's just like I don't know, just seems like a yeah, well, not a stoner comedy, but like a yeah, just like a thing you put Jason Segel or somebody in, you know, just like whatever movie, you know, like I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is too, it's not like this is a guy with a shortage of ideas, right? 
you know, like there's plenty of one shot directors, especially like from the nineties where it's just like, you had this one thing, you made it. And then you just kind of did work for hire and shit like that. Yeah. You know, like I, like I, I've always talked about a movie I have, I have two versions of that movie, two very distinct ways of doing that movie and making it a sequel. That's not a sequel. Okay. And not a remake either of what movie? The movie I have in my head oh, okay. that I want to get into. All but right. All right. Fair. Like, I thought you were talking about something existing. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I asked me to make something else, and I'd be like, no. Like, I have these two things, and that's really... If I get to make them, I'd be happy, and I'd die happy. But even if I only got to make one of them, I'd die happy. But, yeah. you know, I, I wonder sometimes if people are like... If, like, he did Eternal Sunshine, I was like, I don't know how to do anything better than this yeah I you know mean, or if he just looks exhausting because i mean like i can yeah. just the i mean i was i was re-watching some of it recently and i mean there's just little things that like i you just don't notice on the first second third or fourth watch through it mm-hmm. it's just like holy shit it's like the detail of that it's just it's crazy yeah yeah yeah, yeah and you know. sometimes you wonder if they're just like yeah that that was that that, that, that was me. my shot <laughs> yeah I spent it all on that. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I can just be a guy who makes normal movies that don't require a lot of effort with maybe a little bit of animation. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause I seem to remember there's like a little bit of that yeah. hand, uh, hand animation of his in be kind rewind through some of the, uh, what, so, what were yeah. they called that? What, what was that called? The sweeting. Yeah. Sweeting the old movies. Mm-hmm. They recreated the other movies. Yeah. Also, I realized I found out recently through that digging the great guys channel that I didn't know most deaf wasn't most deaf anymore. Yeah. Uh, Sadiq Bay. Most, yes. Definitely. Sadiq Bay, is that right? Yassine. Yassine, Yassine Bay, yeah. Yeah, I believe that's his name now. Who's yeah. Sadiq? Where did I come up with Sadiq from? You're. Oh, I, <laughs> I, there's somebody I know who you're talking about. Yeah. There's somebody else he's talked about that has that name. Changed their name to that. No. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know. It, like, most has always been weird in that it's like you had one really good album. And you showed up on a lot of stuff, like guesting for people, but like the second album only had like maybe two good songs. And Are you I talking about like, him or Blackstar by himself? Like, by himself. Okay. Because right. uh, Blackstar, I don't really like Blackstar that much either. Oh. Like, like I I like more Talib's solo stuff as well as most deaf stuff. Okay. Like Reflection Eternal is way better than Blackstar, I feel. But I... I I don't know. It's just, it's weird because most is like one of those people who's always been respected, but like ask me to be like, like any song that's not on black on both sides. I'd be like, I couldn't really tell you. Yeah. I mean, most to me was always just like, he was one of those people who was like, he was just talented enough in all kinds of areas that he could switch it up. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't say he ever like ever truly excelled at any one, you know, yeah. that, that's the kind of thing. It's like, wow, you're, you're good enough to bounce around, like you're you're a decent enough actor. You're, you're clearly a musician, blah blah blah. You know, it's just like, but you know, you're not like I don't know, just not outstanding in any one particular. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, just a it's still just weird a general Renaissance man, if you will. It's still weird to me that he was like it was him in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he and it's not like he was bad. It was just like this is weird because is, I I honestly don't remember him ever being in a movie before that. Six, I know he 16 was sixteen blocks, I think. He was in that yeah. Bruce Willis movie. Yeah. I think. I think that's what it was called. But I think, I mean, he had done something where he was in a movie before they were like, here, mm-hmm. have it. But he's, you know, second fiddle, second guy, whatever. I mean, he's kind of the sidekick in 16 Blocks, basically. Mm-hmm. I think I'm remembering that's the name of that movie that he's in with Bruce Willis. I back, think back when Bruce right. Willis gave a shit. It was that Richard Donner as well? <sighs> Maybe. I Might think it been. was. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it was a very, that's a strange casting. Especially amongst like, I don't know, like, yeah, it just felt like, it felt like a different casting director came in with that idea. That's what's weird, because, like, the other ones were like, yeah, like, you went, that's completely by book. Like, I don't know, like, I think I've said this before, like, the first time I ever saw Almost Famous, out of fucking nowhere, my brain went, she'd be really good at Hitchhiker's Guy <laughs> as that character. Mm-hmm. And then, fucking lo and behold, like, three years later, or whatever, four years later, yeah. it's like, now it's at Zoe Dish and all of a sudden, be her, and I was like, did I will yeah. that into existence? Like, how did, how why, that why did, and I don't know why I saw that. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, Martin Freeman, yeah. Sam Rockwell's a little bit of an odd choice at the time, but you know, we, we now are privy to Sam Rockwell's talents, you know, mm-hmm. so it seems odd. But 
Yeah, that movie's not great. No, it's it should not. be better. It really should. I don't remember liking it, but being like, yeah, it's all right. I could have had a lot more out of this. Yeah, but that's also that's like just like everything needs to be like you know an HBO six ten episode thing. Look, yeah, I don't even think to it's really like, do I, it. Right. I don't think it's like the length or anything. I think it's just there's so much of that movie that's wasted, like sweeping through CG bullshit, and it's just like yeah. that. I don't know. Like, does does it, has anyone ever been been wondered by one of those scenes in a movie? Like, I mean, ever like seen that and been like, anymore. oh wow, like they're flying through ones and zeros right now. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think that's why so many directors gravitated towards long takes because yeah. it's just like CG doesn't really wow you anymore. You know, yeah, there's there's yeah. no big reveal that we go, oh my god. You know, like like Jurassic Park, it works because everyone's so amazed, and then they kind of pan up and show the brontosaurus walking through, and it's like, holy shit, that looks really good. Yeah. You well, know, and, know, and and you can't really have that wonder anymore. I mean, you look at like like the trailers for Ant Man Quantum Mania, and it's just like, there's too much shit on the screen. Like kind of yeah. Like I, I I get you're trying to do this whole amazing world, but there's just too much. Yeah. Yep. There's computers there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next, like that's why I fucking hated Aquaman because Aquaman was just like throw more fish, need more fucking fish. So they just threw as much CG, and there's always like ten thousand things going on in the background of every scene of that movie, and it's like we get it, it's underwater, but just chill the fuck out. You might, you might like Black Panther two more than because like I'm not saying I love Aquaman, but like the life of Atlantis in that versus uh, they don't even call it Atlantis. They call it something yeah. else because they don't want people being confused, I guess. I don't uh, know. Yeah. But uh, whatever, like whatever, wherever Namor's from in there, uh, starts with a T. I can't remember, but uh, Tatlantis. Yeah. T-A-T-1. Tat- yeah. T1 Atlantis. Uh, it's just dark as fuck. I mean, it's just like, couldn't, I mean, well, it was just like, I don't want that either. Well, it, it's but just I mean, like, it was like, there, there was a sense of wonder. It was just like, I don't know. There's some, People tossing a ball of kelp around. Look at this wonderful, marvelous city we have. And it's like, I mean, like Aquaman for all of it's like, okay, tone it back. Like, you know, take a few layers off this and let let my eyes adjust. It's like, at least there's like lights and technology. And you're like, yeah, fucking Atlantis is rad. (laughs) You know, this this looks bad. There's a lot I like and I like that they're going for it in Aquaman. Like it feels like one of the old fantasy movies that they make where they're just like, throw a bunch of shit, like a bunch of ideas out, like Mm -hmm. do some cool stuff with it. And yes, there is, but it's also, I just visually, that movie is too much. It's just too much. I don't know. It worked for me. I think better on the screen. Like it actually, I I could, I could see that. I've watched it. I've watched it again at home. And it's like the, the sort of a sense of, I wonder wasn't the right word, but just like a, just like kind of a slight awe, I suppose. Like, Oh, (laughs) but, uh, it, it just it was it was more prevalent on the screen. Like I remember, like being excited for getting that home and watching it like HDR, just for all the colors popping and stuff. And it's like, yeah, all right, it's fine. I mean, it looked better on the bigger screen. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like you think about like Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. Like uh, they put all these posters with all these neon colors and all this bright shit. And like God. the scene in the mall is bright, and then everything else is like, we're going drab now. Just mm-hmm. so you know. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, You're not even so going to see what the final uh, fight looks that. like with what's her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that that movie's just broken in all ways. Anyway, still not as bad as Black Adam. That movie just fucking sucks a knob, <laughs> and not even a good one. Just yeah. a just a gross little chode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least Wonder Woman, you got Pedro Pascal running around being goofy. Yeah. I, I'm just telling you, like Black Adam seriously feels like it was written by the the Family Guy manatees. I swear to God, it's like everything just feels like it was rent through an AI film generator of like, yeah. after action, sidekick must make comic remark, blah, blah. You know, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's so bad. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad I never cared about the DC movies. I was like, I'll watch them, and if I like them, I like them. If I don't, I don't. But yeah. I don't think I've watched any of them. It's been nice. You haven't seen Wonder Woman? Oh I, well, I, okay. I saw Wonder Woman. That doesn't really count. Yeah, I mean that that one's pretty good. Yeah, like ninety percent of that movie is really good. Yeah, I, and then the right. then the final ten percent fucking sucks. You what, would probably like what, Shazam. That would be my next recommendation. I'm just saying, if you want light and fluffy with little consequence of mm-hmm. like, it's not going to be like grim dark. Like, ugh. you know, it's a fun. I don't movie. care about the DC movies. All right. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm, I'm I don't want to get into them because then I'll. I'm start hitting the point. I don't care about the Marvel movies either. You know, it, it's just I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Like I haven't seen Wakanda forever, but that's because uh, I haven't been able to log into Disney Plus. Yeah. I keep forgetting to bring it up. But yeah, I, I mean, like I don't know. I, I think it's just the whole got to introduce somebody new every movie now. Like, like not just the main characters, but like Riri's got to be in this one. And we got to cram her in somehow. And, mm-hmm. you know, Ant-Man's like, guess what? Cassie's in this one. And, you know, they're going to bring Stature in because that's what she's going to end up being for somehow. You know, it's just. Yeah. It, it just that. No, I mean, didn't, you know, I mean, besides just bringing Riri, Riri Williams, it's like, you know, let's also bring in the oldest Marvel character we have. And Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. I, but but at least he's like the bad guy of the movie. That, that Yeah. Because I remember the original rumors were it's, that's going to be Doctor Doom. And it's like that could have worked, but I, I don't know what they're saving Doom for, unless they're doing like making it, him Phase Three. It, I don't know. It, he better or, or whatever the final you know he phase after in, Kang. He is. better come in with the Fantastic Four. I'm I <sighs> anything else, and I don't care. I mean, I'm just saying like he needs to ha- he needs to have a shared origin story, or else it just doesn't work. I'm sorry, and do it right for once. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah, do it the correct way and make a good movie, and that's what we need, and then he can bounce around and go fight Spider-Man or whomever. But even though that won't happen, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wonder if they're, they're saving him to be the big bad guy of the, the next. I think Galactus will be next. I think Galactus will be just next. Just keep going bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, cause they're already talking about, they've already now mentioned Silver Surfer is going to in, in appear somewhere. Mm-hmm. He's going to probably show up at some point in, you know, probably a secondary character in something to maybe, I don't know if that's a strong enough character to have a whole movie or show or whatever about, but, you know, if they do it all crazy cosmic, maybe, perhaps, but, you know, I think eventually the idea is is that through phase six or seven or whatever the hell we go to, that eventually maybe Galactus will be the next big bad bad after Kang. Because we haven't even really apparently met the real Kang yet in all of this. (laughs) Like, like not the one who's, like, going to be the bad guy in the the next Avengers That's right, there's... 50,000 versions running yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I used to really care and I feel like maybe it's because they've cycled out all of the characters I liked that I'm yeah. kind of like, uh, eh. I mean, at least Spider-Man, they've gotten back to the point where it's like, no, he needs to be a loner. broke and sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, that Spider-Man where Peter Parker is broke all the time and sad, not, the kid with a fucking rich billionaire uncle. So Mm -hmm. even if that rich billionaire uncle is dead for two of those movies and and a girlfriend that pursued him, (laughs) I'm saying MJ kind of went after him. Yeah. 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 But, but who even knows what they do? I mean, they haven't even announced any Spider-Man stuff. Have they, they had that animated show and they're like, no, we're not doing that. And I don't even like when the hell is uh, spider verse two coming out this year sometime. Because I, I feel think, like that's been about to come out for like uh, three I mean, years. I mean, they just they finally have an actual trailer, so I think it's coming probably around. I would say probably around August this year, if I had to okay. guess. I feel like that's not an early summer movie. It's a mm-hmm. get it in the summer, but at the end <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It, the first one might have done well enough. They might push it to like July or probably not a Fourth of July weekend, but mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. Yeah. Okay. Let's get out of here. Bye, Internet. Goodbye, the Internet. Bye, everyone. Is anyone writing besides Kyle? <laughs> <laughs>